MMA stars will now make the Lights Out Cage their home. And it begins right now. We are the new era. It's going to be Lights Out. Welcome to the premier broadcast of Lights Out Extreme Fighting. Hello, everybody. I'm Todd Kennelly, along with my broadcast partners, Jonathan King, Manuk Akopian. We come to you from Southern California, a hotbed in the world of mixed martial arts, and you are about to find out why. As some of the most talented, hungry fighters battle it out under the bright lights. But right now, our broadcast partner, Victories, he can knock you out in a second. I just saw him. He is ready, but it will not be easy facing Albert Morales, somebody that you know very well. Albert the Belizean warrior Morales has been a training partner of mine for years at Black House MMA. He's great on the feet, he's great on the ground, and he is an extremely dangerous opponent for Musa Tolliver. Sean Merriman is building a monster. This is lights out extreme fighting. Pump up the volume. Let's make some noise. And you know, Snoop once said there's so much drama in the LBC. Well, guess what? There's so much fighting in the LBC tonight. This is lights out extreme fighting. Let's get this show rolling. Blake Bulletproof Troop, I am Pablo Alcina. And let's go to our cage announcer, Tyson Johnson. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Thunder Studios. I'm your host, the Iron Man, Tyson Johnson, and this is Lights Out Extreme Fighting. Tonight's promoter, the NFL superstar, Sean Lights Out Merriman. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's event is being brought to you live on Fubo Sports. Your matchmaker tonight, Antonio Jimenez. This event is sanctioned by the California State Athletics Commission and CAMO. Ladies and gentlemen, your commissioner, Peter Villegas. The executive officer, Andy Foster. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's timekeeper, Mr. Mike North. Your physicians at ringside, Dr. Andre Guerrero and Dr. Cynthia Pfeiffer. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight, your judge will be Jackie Duncan. Darren Howard and pulling double duty for your referees, Milan Eris, Javier Davis, and Louis Cobain. Ladies and gentlemen, we have 11 electrifying bouts coming your way, including three amateur world titles. Ladies and gentlemen, I have one question for each and every one of you. Are you ready to put some lights out? And now, introducing first, coming to the cage, Miguel Valtierra. In the blue corner, Miguel Valtierra. Now these are amateur fights, and that's what I love about Lights Out. We see these up and comers, and we can also take this time, these fights, to really talk about the fight game, break down the holes, the strategies alongside pro MMA fighter Blake Bulletproof Troop. You haven't officially retired from MMA, right, Blake? Correct. I have not officially retired. Nice. Last fight was supposed to be March 13, 2020 for the Lights Out at Street Fighting heavyweight title. And unfortunately, COVID canceled that fight and it never happened. And I feel like I might have one more fight in the tank to take home that Lights Out at Street Fighting heavyweight title. Are you hearing that, Sean Merriman? It looks like Blake Bulletproof Troop might want to get back inside the cage. So we're glad all of you are live with us on Fubo. Let's talk about these amateur fighters getting inside that cage. The nerves that it must be, it's not a pro fight, but for them, hey, they're getting punched for real. So talk about the mindset for an amateur fighter. What are they looking for in these fights? You know, one of the biggest things that I would say is different about fighting amateur and lights out of street fighting is that you're fighting on a big stage, big names, big production. These are the bright lights. And so they're getting an experience under big time in a big time organization which will help them significantly when they're fighting in smaller shows because this is where the, the nerves are really real yeah i mean there's lots of like amateurs they can do like street fights uh, or, or smaller organizations but this is lights out this is ran by sean merriman these are real uh, an amazing organization we've seen former ufc fighters in here all the time in the main event we have uh, Morales, he fought in the UFC seven times, and he's here in Lights Out. So this is an amazing brand and a great opportunity for these amateur fighters. 100%. And the music, and I love here. Shout out, by the way, to Infinite Reality Studios, an amazing production. Usually we're in casinos, but they built this great atmosphere in here for these fights. And now, please welcome to the cage, Antonio Ruelas.
Let's go to the tail of the tape. Antonio Ruelas, 5'9". Miguel Valtierra, 5'8". 28 years old for Antonio, 26 for Miguel. Again, both of them are sporting 2-0 and undefeated records, which means both of these guys have won their two fights they've been a part of. But tonight, someone's O has got to go. Let's go to Tyson Johnson, our cage announcer. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this amateur bout will be three two-minute rounds in the featherweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This fighter stands five feet, eight inches tall. He weighed in at 145 pounds. He represents MTLA and Hybrid Academy with an undefeated record of two wins and zero defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Miguel Valtierra. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner stands five feet, nine inches tall. He went in at 146 pounds. He represents SoCal Fight Factory with an undefeated record of two wins and zero defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Catania Ruelas. Ruelas bringing lots of fans. Making noise already. We are pumped. This is Lights Out Extreme Fighting 11. This just the first fight. We're going to go for more than four hours. So are you guys ready? Let's get this fight game down in LBC underway. Rellis has been staring at Valtierra nonstop since he's gotten inside and they've been facing off. I like the intensity that I'm seeing out of him. And the fight is underway. Ruelas out of the red corner with the long hair. Valtierra. In the blue corner, a couple kicks early, measuring each other out. Both guys clearly respect. Oh, oh that right, 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 Valtierra, the connects. I was going to say both guys really respect each other. They're feeling each other out, and I can see why with the way that Valtierra just landed that right hand. He's got some power. Valtierra has speed in that right hand, and he actually threw it while leaning back, protecting himself as well. Impressive punch to start this fight. Aruelas took the the punch like a champ, though. He did. That was a solid right hand out of Valtierra. So an interesting dynamic you can see here with the striking is Valtierra is uh, or orthodox. Whoa! Oh, 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 he's out of oh, the And it's all oh, out! Oh, bye! Bye! Baby! The long hair! Oh! And the punching power! I said he took a punch like a champ and then he responded with fury! What a knockout! What a way to begin! Man, I want to see a replay of that. He was out on his feet a few shots and then put him down. And you see Valtierra still on the ground, unconscious. What a fantastic knockout by Ruelas. Wow. I said he looked like Jesus and maybe he was going to come out and baptize his opponent. And that was a baptism if I've ever seen one. Baptism by fire, that is. Wow. Now undefeated, 3-0, and Antonio Ruelas as an amateur. I'd like to see him step in as a pro already because his boxing game is on point. His defense a little shaky in that first punch, and it looked like Ruelas got, got upset. Let's look at the replay again, Blake. It did not take long, but watch this. The knee starts it, a right, a left, yeah. an uppercut. Oh, wow. Wow. That's yeah, he was four of those. I don't want to say were unnecessary, but he was out on his feet, and Morellis continued the barrage until the referee stepped in. Exactly what he should do. The killer instinct out of this kid. Wow. Yeah, he wasn't falling because he kept being punched to his feet. And, and again, it's the referee's job to stop the fight. You cannot criticize Antonio Morellis for ending it. And it was like target practice right there. And it was like lightning the way that he started to finish that. There was not a ton of time for Luis Kobe to even jump in. He caught a bang, 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 bang. And by that point, he was knocked out. And the referee was trying to get in. But what a finish to start off the night here. It lights out Extreme Fighting 11. Wow, this is, I, we're hoping he's OK. He seems to be turning. Now, again, also for Miguel Valtierra, you come in five seconds into the fight. You land a clean right. I mean. You're, you must be thinking, this is perfect. This is in my wheelhouse. Then you respond with another quick right. You're showing your speed. And then he ate a knee. If you watch the replay, Ruelas lands a perfect knee. And I think that took out all the air from Valtierra. His arms just dropped. And then came the barrage of punches. You're exactly right about the hands dropping. He landed that knee. Valtierra stepped back. And his hands went down. And that's when Ruelas unloaded with a barrage of strikes. 
that put uh, Valtierra's lights out. You can see a big smile here on Ruelas' face. You got to be happy after a finish like that. It doesn't get much better than getting in the lights out of Street Fighter Cage, starting off the card, and ending with a awesome first round knockout. We are here with Sean Merriman. Merriman, what a beginning to this fight. What a beginning to this fight. An incredible knockout by Antonio Ruelas. And again, this, this is an amateur fight. Yeah, we saw some perfect boxing. Perfect boxing by Ruelas. Sean Merriman lights out Extreme Fighting 11. What do you think about what you just saw in this first round and this beginning of the night as we watch the knockout again? Yeah, I mean, look, that, there's no better way to start the night off than you know, we've seen some big knockouts already with the amateurs. We've seen guys get put away already, but this right here, man, this was this was big, devastating blows. He's still down. I'm glad he's getting up. You know, all the time when these guys get into their fight, man, you you wish the best for them. You want them to come out healthy. Obviously, you want to see some good fighting. I'm glad he's up, man. But no, that was a devastating hard hit. Yeah, and it began well for Valtteri. Come in, he responded. He hit him with a nice right, and then Antonio Ruelas responds. Sean, talk to us about why you love having these amateur fights on Lights Out. I think it, it, it's such a great move by you. Yeah, you know, and I'm, I'm glad that you know Fubo was on board um, to get these guys seen because a lot of times these amateurs coming up in the ranking, you want these guys turning pro with you. Uh, you want to give it, give these guys an opportunity to turn pro with you, and so you put these amateurs out there, you get a chance for them to be seen, and. Look, bottom line, we're looking at growing these talent. We want all these guys. We want to grow our own talent. He, he may be a next up and coming guy. He get a chance to be seen. His friends, families back home watching wherever he's from. They're watching. So we want these guys to have the opportunity to be seen and turn pro with us. Sean, you have a great card today. Musa Tolliver fighting Albert Morales. I mean, this is the main event. You got to sell the people watching this right now on Fubo. Why they got to watch this whole night? Guys, I, I've said this before and I said it again. I've trained with both of these guys. One. With, uh, with 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 Albert at Black House, and I trained with Musa down in uh, Orange County. There's bad blood. There's bad blood. With these guys, they, they kept kind of poking at me when they saw me, saying, "Hey, we, we want to go. We want to get this going." And Albert has promised. Albert has promised a highlight tonight. Woo. Albert has promised a highlight. I've known him for a very long time. I don't think he'll be saying it. Just be saying it. That one is going to be a bank. That, that's going to be the, one of the biggest fights of the night. Lights out. Extreme Fighting 11. He is Sean Merriman, the founder. We were going back to inside the cage. What a beginning, Sean, with that knockout. And this Antonio Ruelas with that long hair flying. And those punches were landing, Sean. No doubt about that, man. And I'll, I'll tell you this. You know, I, we, we talk about the refs jumping at you earlier or whatnot. Let's go now to Tyson Johnson, our ring announcer. Ladies and gentlemen, after 48 seconds into round number one, your winner, what way of knockout, Antonio Ruelas. Okay. Here with the winner, Antonio. Now you landed that knee and then multiple shots. T walk us through that knockout. Um, honestly, I, he just we were talking in the back and they were telling me like land that two, land that two, land that one, move to the outside, and that's basically what I did. I just moved to the outside and he caught me once, uh, right here, right behind the ear. After that, I was like, he ain't gonna catch me like that again. So I adjusted, I moved a little bit to, to over, caught him, caught him with that knee, and game over. So. Now you go to three, you know, undefeated. What's next for you? What, what fight? Um, hey, back in the, in Monday, back at the gym on Monday. So I'll be back at it. We'll be looking for the next fight, see what we can do, and always looking to get better. Congratulations, our winner, Antonio Valerides. Antonio Reles with the victory. Lights out, extreme fighting, 11. Quick commercial break, and we'll be back with a lot more. We have seven pro fights, a couple more amateur fights to go as well. This is Lights Out Extreme Fighting.
Lights Out Extreme Fighting 11. The first fight did not get out of the first minute of the first round, and we already have a highlight knockout, and we already have someone going. That's right, Blake Bulletproof. Proof with a perfect call. Yeah, we already saw literally his lights were out cold. And that was just the first 30 seconds of tonight, Blake. And that's what you'd expect if you tune in the lights out extreme fighting. Guys coming to fight and people's lights get turned out. Yeah, what, I mean, what an awesome night. Sean Merriman just stepped away because he's, he's running the whole show. But to have a, a pro bowler, such a huge NFL star here, now building an MMA company, which is just getting so much better. And the quality of the opponents, the fights, Blake, is just impressive. Sean is a lifelong athlete, so he has found some of the best athletes to get inside this cage and get down. Coming up later tonight, we have A.J. Hodgkins having an amateur fight who is a former linebacker for Oregon uh, football, which nice. I'm excited to see him get in and see what he can bring to the lights out of street fighting cage. I, w I did a story up in Oregon, and they, they train their, their athletes so like for the football team. They give them exactly what to eat, what to train. Every single second is perfectly measured out for them. So you know he's going to be in amazing shape. And also, I want to share this story. Tommy Aaron's going to fight in the co-main event today. This story is wild. Blake, he just told us he just had twin babies back September 19th one was born and then at midnight the second twin was born September 20th so Tommy Aaron fighting tonight proud papa of two boys big congrats to the wife and to Tommy and those two baby boys watching lights out tonight yeah that's a big deal two kids and he had them about three weeks two and a half weeks before getting inside the lights out of street fighting cage which is a big responsibility, so I'm excited to see him get in here and be able to unleash some of this life stress that he probably has. Next fight is seconds away. The reason why we're not starting, the doctor has to be in position. They're still looking at the, the last fighter who was taken out. We want to report that he seemed okay. He was on his feet when he was leaving, so hopefully all the blessings to him that he's okay. But I'm telling you, the main event, Musa Tulliver versus Albert Morales, 140-pound catch weight. But this fight has it all. And then we have Tommy Aaron, who's fighting as well against Quinones. So we're going to see a little bit of everything today. We should see a little bit of everything. Like you said, that main event, Albert, the Belizean Warrior, former UFC veteran, going against Musa Tolliver, who had a fantastic win. I believe it was at Lights Out of Street Fighting 7. This is going to be a banger of a matchup, and you don't want to miss it. And since you guys are live with us, here's a little treat. Follow us at Pablo Alcina on Instagram and Twitter or X, whatever it's called, at Pablo Alcina, which is yours? At Bulletproof Troop on Instagram or at Big Troop 22 on X. If you find us on Instagram, if you follow us and tell us we're watching Lights Out Extreme Fighting 11, we will follow you back. We have friends, so ask us questions. Ask Blake questions about MMA, even about wrestling. We are here for you guys. And Lights Out Extreme Fighting 12 will return November 18th. So put that down on the calendar as well. Should be another night of bangers because that's what you can always expect at Lights Out Extreme Fighting. Like you said, we're on a little bit of a break right now because someone just got their lights out. This night, if you're on the West Coast, it's going to be around 10 o'clock, 10.30 when we're done. In the East Coast, it's going to be past 1 in the morning. But trust me, you're going to have an amazing night. And call your friends and tell them to put on Fubo and watch Lights Out Extreme Fighting 11. So let's watch the first fight again. Since it didn't take long, well, we'll get ready for the second fight. But in case you missed it, here's the whole fight again. So let's call it like a real fight. Miguel Valtiera taking on Antonio Ruelas. Ruelas with the long hair. Valtiera in the blue corner. And here, Blake, early on, we see speed and good punch power right there from Valtiera. Yeah, very nice right hand. Both these guys are undefeated. 2-0 getting inside of the cage. We saw a great right hand out of Valtiera very early. And then Antonio Ruelas came back, started off the barrage with a knee right around now. Yeah, you're going to see the knee, and the, I think the knee did it, because you see Ruelas, just, his air goes out. Here comes Valtieri, he's measuring him out. Yeah, that knee definitely set the stage for him to be able to land the strikes that led to the knockout. Now let's see if Valtieri could have done the boom right there. Yeah, I mean, the knee lands, and then it's just a flurry. And just light fast hands out of Ruelas, landing four or five strikes before Valtiera could even hit the ground. Um, can't blame the referee. It was just a clean left, right. He was starting to fall, and an uppercut 
brings him to his feet again, and then two more punches. What a way to begin this night. We are at Infinite Reality Studios alongside Blake Bulletproof Troop. I am Pablo Alcina, and we saw that fight twice now, and again, impressive, just perfect combination placements. Normally with amateurs, you're gonna see some wild shots. I mean, he landed every single punch he threw, Blake. Yeah, those those are some very high-level amateurs. And that's one of the things you can see here at Lights Out of Street Fighting, the future of the sport. Amateur guys that are gonna come up that soon you're gonna see are the pros, and then the champions here, and potentially UFC veterans later on. Lights out, Extreme Fighting 11. Again, we are live. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll get ready for fight number two. Lights out, Extreme Fighting 11. Hodgkins versus Garcia is next. We are live, Lights Out Extreme Fighting 11, ready for fight number two. Let's go to the man, the myth, the legend, the man with that golden voice, Tyson Johnson. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Lights Out cage, Gianni Garcia. Entering first in the blue corner, Gianni Garcia. This, again, an amateur fight. Garcia coming in. Confident. I like him. How do you see him, Blake? How do you see his uh, intensity? You, you like know, him? coming out very calm, like I said with the last guys that came out. They're fighting in the, under the bright lights of Lights Out Extreme Fighting, which is an opportunity to fight basically in the big leagues as an amateur. And this guy is coming out cool, calm, and collect. Are you liking the hairdo? I'm feeling it. Very, very 70s. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not going to complain about anybody's hair because I don't have much, but I like it. You know, I think the hairstyle matches the lipstick kiss mark or tattooed on his neck. Yeah. I'm a fan. I'm feeling it. It's very, very coming to America back, back in the day, the 80s. I like it. Bring it back. Bring back those cool hairstyles. Again, this is an amateur fight. What's his record? I'm not sure. I don't have that information here in front of me. Round. And the music going. Shout out to everyone watching us on Fubo. Must admit, I got Fubo, Blake. I got Fubo, and I love it. I watch, uh, I watch everything on Fubo now. The record for Garcia: three victories as an amateur, two losses. If you lose the matter, getting that experience. So let's go back to Tyson Johnson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the cage. AJ Hutchkins.
Pablo, I'm excited to see A.J. Hodgkins get in here and fight. Like I mentioned earlier on the broadcast, he is a former linebacker for Oregon football, which is a big Division I powerhouse football team. So this guy is a lifelong athlete who's been very disciplined because to compete at that level, you have a ton of regimented training, dieting, and so forth. And not just that, but he's a smart athlete who understands how to, to learn the game, to play the game. So he's bringing that same type of knowledge and work ethic to, to his fight training that this kid is going to be a monster. One win already as an amateur. Hasn't said how many more amateur fights he's going to get under his belt. But again, former football player now getting inside the cage. And Sean Merriman sees a future for all these NFL players and all these athletes that, that love the adrenaline play of playing in the NFL. But again, it's not that easy. So when these players, the average NFL career is only three to four years. So these are 27, 28-year-old men that are already done with their pro career, but they still have that adrenaline. They're still in amazing shape. They're still athletes. They want to compete. And Sean Merriman says, hey, come on over to Lights Out. It's definitely a really interesting thing having such a high-level athlete in combat sports. Again, the technique is always king, but if you have incredible conditioning, strength, explosiveness, competitiveness, it will absolutely help you inside the lights out of your fight cage. Hodgkins, his first amateur fight, won by knockout in the second round. His second amateur fight, he won by decision. But look at the size of Hodgkins. Oh, look at that back. He is in shape and ready but again once they get inside the cage and muscles just for the photos we want to see what they can do inside absolutely looks can be aesthetic it's what how can you oh i'm feeling that did did we roll on that nice somersault by aj hodgkins as we see the tail of the tape coming in at 5 10 195 pounds 27 years old Facing a Gianni Garcia, just 21. Three victories for Garcia. This is going to be a good one. Let's go back to Tyson Johnson, our cage announcer. Ladies and gentlemen, this next bout will be three two-minute rounds in the middleweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This fighter stands six feet tall. He went in at 194 pounds. He represents the art of violence with a mixed martial arts record, three wins and two defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Gianni Garcia! And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. He stands 5 feet 10 inches tall. He weighed in at 195 pounds. He represents elite kickboxing with a mixed martial arts record of one win and one defeat. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome AJ Hutchkins! Just the eye test, Blake. Don't they look like a different weight class? I mean, A.J. Hutchinson is huge. A.J. is a stacked middleweight. I am surprised if he can make middleweight. That dude is packing some muscle. And not just that, but he's athletic. You saw him come in through that cartwheel with ease. And on top of that, you look at this guy, and he looks like a pit bull who's ready to get let off the leash. Cage doors closed, and it's about to happen, ladies and gentlemen. Fight's underway. The first one lasted less than a minute. Let's see how long this one goes. A.J. Hutchinson with the orange and black trunks in the red corner. Gianni Garcia with the black trunks in the blue corner and that flowing, lovely hair. Nice kick by Hutchinson. Hodgkin's doing a good job of keeping range and, and kind of watching his opponent. Found an opening and landed a big leg kick very early. Being very smart about the exchanges that he wants to get in. Ooh, another low kick by Hutchkins, and boy, those hurt. Yeah, look at, the quad, look at the quads on that guy, man. <laughs> and being a pro and being in great shape, it looks like he had no problem cutting weight. So now he regained the weight, and he's just massive in there, but moving around so smoothly. Yeah, his fluidity is a, a very impressive. A lot of times you see, whoa! And flexibility, bringing his leg high with ease. <laughs> and uh, Gianni laughing with him, hey, this is an amateur fight. Don't take out my head. Oh, and Gianni responding. Garcia came to play. We got ourselves a fight. Hutchkins responds. Man, you cannot take too many leg kicks like that. It does not look like a lot, but those have been solid leg kicks 
by A.J. Hodgkins so far. And if he keeps landing those, you could see a potential TKO finish due to leg kicks because he is chopping those things. Garcia's arms down way too much. I'd like to see Hodgkins try to punch some, but he's just using his kicking. Brains out of a kickboxing gym, so you know he's got the power in the legs. It wouldn't surprise me if we see him bring that kick up high. Look low, kick high. Gianni kicks the hands, or, or kick is coming low, his hands go low, and oh, head kick again. comes just like that. Oh, and now he's looking for the takedown. And there's the Oregon Duck linebacker. Broke it down, got low, used the power, and now he's on top. Yeah, A.J. Hodgkins showing that he's got a lot of tools in the arsenal. He gets a takedown, now he's transitioned to full mount. This is why I love having a pro MMA fighter to my right. How about Garcia, Blake Bulletproof Troop? What can he do to get out of this? He has got to start scrambling and try and get his back to the cage. He's flat right now. If he can start wiggling back and get his back on the cage, he can try and stand up. Hodgkins is using that power, sitting there. He's doing a fantastic job of putting his opponent's head against the cage so he can't move it. When your head gets stuck against the cage. Oh, going for the choke. Good job by Garcia there. I'd like to see Garcia maybe use the cage, now walk his feet over and use the cage to get leverage for a, a scramble or even potential reversal. So much power on top of him, he can't move AJ at all, trying to get out of it. There's AJ, it's that base, and then you mentioned his leg, just solid, huge. He's got muscles on muscle. Yeah, fantastic base, as you mentioned, where Gianni has done a few things to try and create a scramble or a reversal. And AJ Hodgkin is staying on tight on him. Good first round for the former Oregon Duck, A.J. Hodgkins. I'm not even sure A.J. took any damage or anything in that round. That was a fantastic. Let's take a look at some replays, Pablo. He got low, picked them up, and this was just way too easy. I feel like he could do that anytime he wants, but since it's an amateur fight, I hope we see Hodgkins work on his boxing, work on uh, different parts of his game a bit more than just go in and get a win. You know, I was impressed with that takedown. You said he comes out of the kickboxing gym, and we saw him then land some great kicks, get a takedown, transition the mount, land some ground and pound, where we're seeing a bunch of different areas of development in A.J. Hodgkins. We so, know. Something I'd like to see Gianni be a little bit more aggressive on the feet. He seemed like he wasn't completely invested in his attacks. Gianni breathing hard, but he's ready for round two. on AJ Hodgkins. We are live on Fubo. Lights out extreme fighting 11. We have seven pro fights. This one, an amateur. Round two underway. AJ. Orange and black trucks out of the red corner. Has AJ thrown a punch yet? John with a punch. Wow, waiting for him to come in and attack, just drop, change levels, and took Gianni down with ease. Has him now against the cage. Putting a little showtime in that takedown also. AJ using his power. Again, I feel he can keep him here the whole time. Gianni's doing a good job of trying to fight the takedown, getting back to his feet now. I believe AJ's probably going to put him back down with the single leg. Oh, he kind of felt weird on his leg. And again, AJ Hodgkins on top, in control. Yeah, Not absolutely, much can do. absolutely relentless with that takedown. Got him down. Gianni's fought to his feet. He stayed tight on him. Got the takedown. Is now landing some shots from half guard. Still in control. Oh, he might have full mount here again. Yeah, he does. does. Man, this is bad. There is two minutes left in this round, which is a very long time to have a big, strong dude on top of you raining down strikes. Hodgkins hasn't landed a clean one. An elbow right here could end the fight. He's trying to get that space. Johnny doing a good job just to survive. So amateurs, you're not allowed to do elbows actually to the head. So that's why we Great haven't point. seen uh, AJ Hodgkins throw any elbows, which would be extremely effective for this position. He's doing a great job of really smothering from the top here too. He's on the top, round two of three. There's AJ wants to throw those combos to try to finish it. Johnny doing a good job just to survive, but he needs to get on his feet, Blake. And I don't know how he's going to be able to. Yeah, he's got AJ Hodgkins on top in a great position on his back with both hands. Oh, oh, it's going to be it's over. It's going to be over. Good job by Johnny. A minute to go. He is in a very bad spot right now with that arm coming very close to choking. Oh, this is going to be it. 
Got a little reckless there throwing strikes. He should have been protecting his neck with one hand. Doing a good job lowering his chin, though, getting it underneath the arm. You know, oh, you no. can still finish. Oh, he might be. Tap, 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 and AJ Hodgkins ends it with a submission. Fantastic performance by AJ Hodgkins. We saw great striking out of him, great wrestling out of him, and a submission finish in the second round. This kid is going places, Pablo. He's got the look, he's got the size, you know he's got the fire, and he's got lights out. So we hope we see him again in Lights Out Extreme Fighting 12. Why not? The next one's in, well, in November, January, maybe Lights Out Extreme Fighting 13, but it'd be great to see him again. I'm calling it out, Pablo. Within a couple of years, this kid is going to be Lights Out Extreme Fighting professional middleweight champion. I like it. Long way to go. He's still an amateur, but he's looking real good. AJ Hodgkins and there's Sean Merriman walking in, shaking his hand. Which, by the way, can we talk about the size of Sean Merriman? Because AJ Hodgkins is a big guy and he looks tiny next to Sean Merriman. Let's go to the replay and how AJ Hodgkins finally put this fight away. Yeah, he got on Johnny's back, has the body triangle, which really traps a guy in this position, was fighting for that rear naked choke and eventually secured it and got the tap. Great fight all around by A.J. Hodgkins. Another part of fighting is you want to hurt people, you want to beat people, you also don't want to get hit. And this was perfect for A.J. I, I didn't see him receive one blow. Blake, did you see any? A uh, couple of kicks. Ball is victory. I mean, he checked the kicks that I saw. It was a fantastic performance strategically as well as physically for A.J. Hodgkins. What a great fight by A.J. Hodgkins. We're waiting for the official decision. See the tattoos and boy, is that man in shape. AJ Hodgkins and how easily he throws those kicks. I mean, just smooth. Did you just see the kick low? he just yeah. threw in the ring right now? Wow. The agility this guy has. Incredible. Let's go to the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after two minutes, 17 seconds into round number two, your winner, I play a tap out, AJ Hodgkins. AJ with the victory. Let's go to Bonnie Jill Laughlin, who's in the cage with our victorious AJ Hutchkins. Great show of sportsmanship between both fighters. AJ Hutchkins, winner here. Now, linebacker at Oregon and not MMA. How did that translate football into MMA? Oh, man, uh, you know, I'm just talking about I'm a pro. I come in here and, uh, you know, I'm always ready to go. I'm always game to compete. You know, the, the real gangster is this guy right here, man. He, hey, he, hey, he, hey, check this out, guys. Hey, he stepped up. Nobody wanted to fight. We have four opponents. He stepped up. He's a real G. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, but as far as the football background, I'm not worried about that, man. I, I've dedicated my life to this the last, you know, 10 months, and you guys are going to continue to see the levels, you know, and, uh, you know, so, you know, I'm just excited to be here, man. Thank you guys, Long Beach. Thank you guys for having me out. Sean, uh, you know, thanks for having me out, man. This has been awesome, man, so. Now, the striking was really working for you. Did you know taking him down by submission was going to be the way you're going to take well, him out? I'll tell you guys what, man. This guy's, this guy's no slouch, man. He's three and two. You know, he's knocking people out. He has heavy hands, kind of unorthodox. So, you know, we, we, we said we were going to kick the leg, come in here, kick the leg, put him on the ground, take away his power. And, you know, you asked about the Oregon background. You know, it's just coming together with the game plan and then coming out here and executing. So, again, guys, you know, there, there'll be more. There'll be more. Um, you know, more performances out of me, and uh, I, again, I'm just super thankful to be here. Thankful for him, man. He stepped up at the end of the day when other people wouldn't step up. He has big nets, so I appreciate yeah. it, man. I appreciate it. Cong Always. Congratulations. Our winner, hey, AJ Hodgkins. Oh, no, real quick, man. Well, Kevin, man. Kevin, where are you at, Kevin? We've been looking for you, man. I've been asking about Kevin. They, 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 said, they said he was hurt, so ice up, son. Let's get, let's get after it, man. Next event, whatever the next event is, bring Kevin out here. I don't know how to pronounce his last name, otherwise I'd say that too. But, uh, yeah, man, you guys won't see the last of me. And so, uh, again, man, just super grateful to be out here. Hopefully Kevin will step up. And if not, we have other names out there. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're coming after it. We're trying to fight five, six, seven, eight times a year and come out here and uh, uh, put on a performance, put on a show for you guys. So I uh, appreciate you guys having me out today, man. Thank you, guys. All right, AJ Hodgkins. 
Hodgkins with the victory and the highlights break and we'll be back with more Lights Out Extreme Fighting 11. We are live, Lights Out Extreme Fighting 11. The first fight ended in a knockout, the second in a choke out, and we're just getting started. Let's go to Tyson Johnson, our cage announcer for fight number three. Well, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Lights Out cage, Raul Mendoza. The blue corner, Raul Mendoza entering first. And I saw a belt in the cage. We're going to find out all the details for you as we watch the entrance of Raul Mendoza. There is absolutely a big shine lights out extreme fighting championship belt in the ring right now. And Raul Mendoza looks like he is ready to take it home. Oh, he's got that, that Tupac Thug Life tattoo across the stomach. That's a big thing to represent, but he must be a scrapper if he is fighting for a Lights Out Extreme Fighting Championship belt. So we might see some thugging going on inside of this cage in a moment, Pablo. He looks intense. He looks ready. Everything changes when that bell rings, though, and the punches start flying. But my man, Raul Mendoza, he's ready to get inside that lights out extreme fighting cage. Yeah, very serious look on his face. He looks like he is ready to hurt someone. as well here fighting under the bright lights of lights out extreme fighting ladies and gentlemen please welcome to the lights out cage andrew carvajal andrew carvajal entering second out of the red corner this is an amateur fight we have six pro fights coming up tonight including the main event musa tolliver taking on albert morales but we also have Tommy Aaron fighting Sergio Quinones as Tommy Aaron looks to win for a second time in a row inside the Lights Out Extreme Fighting cage. And thank you for everybody that's following us on Instagram and on Twitter. At Pablo Alcina on Instagram. Follow me. Follow my partner, Blake Bulletproof Troop. 
at Bulletproof Troop on Instagram or at Big Troop 22 on X. Yeah, shout out to Drew Jordan. He said he's watching, he's following, so I, I, I'm following him back. People follow us, we follow you. Let's keep this going. Lights Out of Stream Fighting 12 is November 18. So this party keeps on going. Andrew Carbajal coming in. So Andrew Carbajal is trains with the Badger crew, which is Anthony Rosales, who is a scrapper. So he definitely has a bunch of really tough training partners who come to fight. That's one of the things about the Badger crew. These kids scrap, just like the honey badger, the animal. So I'm excited to watch this fight. Raul Mendoza looks serious. Andrew Carvajal comes out of a great camp, so I know he's prepared. This should be a scrap. I expect someone to go, who like With the music blaring. Let's go to the tail of the tape for this fight between Raul Mendoza and Andrew Carvajal. Blake, any numbers that jump out at you? You know, the only big difference I see here is the record. Four and three, five and two. Both have seven fights. One guy has one more win, one guy has one more loss. Very, very close all the way around. Also 22 and 23 years old, both lightweights. I also like that they have lots of amateur fights, but they might be ready to go pro. Let's go back to our ring cage announcer, Tyson Johnson. Ladies and gentlemen, this amateur bout will be three, three minute rounds in the lightweight division. This bout is being brought to you by Fubo Sports TV. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This fighter stands five feet, 10 inches tall. He weighed in at 155 pounds. He's an independent fighter with a mixed martial arts record of four wins and three defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Raul Mendoza. His opponent fighting out of the red corner stands five feet, eight inches tall. He weighed in at 153 pounds. He represents the Den Training Center with a mixed martial arts record of five wins and two defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Andrew Carvajal. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this bout is for the lights out, lightweight amateur championship of the world. Your referee for this bout will be Rafael Davis. Fighters, we went over the rules in the back. This is for the title. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Touch gloves if you want to right now. Come out to me. Mendoza versus Carvajal. Mendoza was staring daggers at Carvajal the entire time they were inside the ring. Carvajal looks like he's in there to enjoy himself. Mendoza looks like he's in there to hurt somebody. Touching hands, showing class, and punches already fly. Very Blue shorts for Andrew Carvajal. Mendoza had a great jab. Oh, oh, up, 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 up. Oh, he couldn't get him down. Did he get the takedown? But yes, he To his corner. Wow, what a slam. And a big thing to note, he's right next to his coaches. They're right here, feet away from him, where he's able to be coached strategically by his by his team. Andrew Carvajal picked him up and moved him exactly where he wanted him, next to his coaches, up against the cage, and Carvajal doing work. We need to help out Raul Mendoza. What can he do here? He's doing a good job of continuing to try to skate back. He's trying to get his back to the cage so he can wall walk up because he does not want to accept bottom position. You see Carvajal there pulling the arm out to get him back to his back being on the mat. Yeah, Mendoza might have more reach. Carvajal closed that distance in a hurry and just made this a wrestling match early on. And has Mendoza in a tough spot when you get a guy down and jam his head against the cage like this, it's really uncomfortable because it's hard for, oh, he looks like he's digging for a double wrist lock here on Carvajal's right arm. I'm not sure he's going to be able to get it. It's going to be really hard to finish with the cage there. This is so interesting because he literally has his coach two feet from him. So he's looking at his coach oh. in the eyes and having a quick conversation. Oh, so oh wait, he's got an arm. He's, he's, so he's looking for that double wrist lock, like I said. He came very close to getting that arm behind Carvajal's back. Carvajal gets his arm free. Oh, good job by Carvajal. But finally, Mendoza got to his feet. Can he stay there? And back 
down again. Carvajal just showing a great display of wrestling here. Just controlling this fight. And Mendoza went and tried to counter with a single leg of his own and ended up getting taken back down by Carvajal. Fantastic wrestling. Oh, he's got him up again. Oh, he wants he to a, watch this choke. He up. wants a spectacular slam. Good work by Mendoza to close it down. That choke saved him from getting bodies. Yeah, the 100% did. It's very smart of Carvajal. And he's not, out. Yeah, another nice takedown. It was very smart of Carvajal not to get that big takedown because it would have put him in a dangerous spot with that choke. Less than a minute. 45 seconds to go in this first round. Dominated by Andrew Carvajal. Raul Mendoza, gamer so far. You can see Mendoza looking for a triangle choke. I love oh. his, his legs high, but it might be hard to finish it again with the cage here. Escapes, wow. Mendoza's doing a fantastic job of throwing up submissions from the bottom. Couple of those threats, though, when the bell rings, maybe Carvajal has to think about it if he wants to do that again. So good work by Mendoza surviving in his first run and having attempts to maybe closing in the hole. So now we see Carvajal with great head position, jamming Mendoza's head between his head and the cage, which allows him to land some strikes and grind his opponent down. The more grinding he does, the harder it's going to be for Mendoza to throw up another submission attempt. Ooh! That, uh, luckily it didn't land. Yeah, that would have been an illegal kick to a downed opponent had that landed. Yeah, if that lands, he could have lost the fight. So, uh, round two. Put me in the corner of Raul Mendoza. Obviously, you're telling him, try to avoid the takedown. But that's easier said than done. Avoid the takedown. Utilize straight attacks, hold your ground, or back up. If you move forward, it's going to be easier for your opponent, to, easier for your opponent to get a hold of your hips. And something else, as you scramble, don't try and get a counter takedown. When he got back up, he went for a takedown of his own and ended up on his back again. If you're able to get to your feet, disengage and fight again at range. And also Mendoza, maybe time a knee. If he's coming in for your takedown, you can time it right. You can turn the fight in one split second as well. But so far, Andrew Carvajal had four or five takedowns, dominated round one. But to Mendoza's credit, didn't really receive that much, didn't receive that much damage, except for the body slams, but you're still falling on a mat. So. You know, not only that, but he had two threats to finish the fight. That double wrist lock wasn't extremely close, but it was definitely a legitimate threat. So the guy's not out of the fight. That, in my opinion, could even be a tough round to judge. Here comes round two, and also how much energy did Carvajal spend on that? And those didn't really fight out of those holes. It's not like he was burning energy. So we'll see. This round two, Mendoza in the black, Carvajal in blue. Carvajal's doing a good job of drawing Mendoza towards him. He keeps backing up. Mendoza moves forward and then now gets taken down. Like I said, he needs to hold his ground and back up. Carvajal convinced him to move forward and quickly got the takedown on him here in round two. Yeah, he said he had to time a knee. He instead went for the punch, missed high, which was easy for Carvajal to drop down and get the takedown. He just got impatient. He should have waited for Carvajal to come to him instead of close the distance for Carvajal. Oh, he's got he's looking at double wrist lock again, but this time Carvajal is passed around. But his arm is not completely free. Mendoza still has that double wrist lock grip of the right arm of Carvajal. Oh, he can get this hand oh, behind his opponent's back. Mendoza can dig that. Oh, 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 oh. He nearly had it there. That would have one him fight, maybe broken an arm. Great job by Carvajal. Oh, I get him to get out of it. Exactly. Here he needs to separate. I swear to mention, he needs to disengage instead of go for a takedown of his own. Because Carvajal is clearly a very strong wrestler. This is an amazing card so far. Knockout, a submission, and now a great wrestling battle with Mendoza attacking with Jiu-Jitsu hold. So I'm loving everything going tonight. Whoa. Bad move. Oh, it's set on his back, and now we see Mendoza back on bottom position path guard. Oh, and he strikes. And strikes to the ear and to the throat. Those cannot feel good at all. So you can't see him in the camera angle, but Mendoza's left arm is pinned, and his right arm is trapped on the far side of Carvajal's head, leaving his head completely exposed to punches. They're not extremely powerful, but he's just chop, 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 and banging on Mendoza's head. Head, ear, chin, everything. Couple more shots. Great work by Carvajal. In the first round, Mendoza escaped. Mendoza's looking for what we call a buggy choke. If he's able to clasp his hands, his right arm is still trapped under Carvajal's uh, left knee, as you, or shin, as you can see. If he can get that arm out, he does have what's called a buggy choke, which is a very unorthodox choke, but it is extremely effective because guys never see it coming. 
He has got to get that right arm free. Oh, Otherwise, Carvajal's just going to be pounding. Carvajal is still in he's good position. Carvajal's not even trying to blow yes, it. He's not even trying to pass. He's locked down half guard. Found an opening. Now he's passed the full mount, which is a fantastic position to finish a fight, whether by submission or ground. Power. There's the ground and power. Oh, he landed. He might have another one. Ten seconds to go. Referee holding up. Referee's got to stop that fight, baby. Stop that fight. Carvajal, stop that fight. That fight should have been stopped five blows earlier. That upsets me a little bit. But what a fight by Andrew Carvajal. Blake, am I wrong? It was a fantastic performance. Very good ability to get in close distance, get takedowns, stay in a dominant top position, land strikes, eventually move to an even more dominant position where he was able to finish the fight with vicious ground and pound that has left Raul Mendoza sleeping on the mat. Lights out. Yeah, the, the hard part for the referee, though, I know what happened. He heard the 10-second count. He was trying to give him that opportunity for the round to save him, but it was a wrong decision by the referee, man. He should have stopped that fight five blows earlier. He should have been at least closer so he can stop it. And he took three crushing blows when the fight should have been stopped. Um, you know, but, as but a again, fighter, I like to see guys be able to fight, but this is the amateur level where if this was a championship fight for professionals, I could see it going a little longer, giving a guy that chance. But I do agree with you that at the amateur level, that was probably a little bit long. Let's take a look at some of these highlights, Pablo. Let's watch it again. Andrew Carvajal. Mendoza had a couple chances. Now, this right there is a pounding. He's still defending himself somewhat. There he's not he's defending out. himself. Yeah. He's not. The, he stops defending himself, I'll tell you where. There, and the referee's not in position. The referee should have already stopped the fight right there, and he didn't. It was like three more clear punches once he was already out. Yeah, so when he went from being completely, he might be out here He's already out. with his He's arms. Out. Even He's with holding his arm up, but he was already out. But again, we hope he's okay. He's honest. He's at least on, on, on the chair now. But again, do we promise and do we deliver with lights out, Blake? We said at the start of the show, you're going to see knockouts. You're going to see submissions. You're going to see amazing amateur fights and pro fights. We've only seen amateur, and we've delivered already, Blake. We've seen three finishes and two people go, lights out. And we're only three fights into the card, Pablo. Thank you for everybody watching us. Mr. Flores, I can't say his first name because it's a bad word in some languages, but thank you. Keep following us, keep sending messages, tell your friends, put on Fubo. Andrew Carvajal with an impressive performance, impressive performance of wrestling, and then the ground and pound to finish it off. We still have a lot more to go. And remember, Fubo is not only sports. You have movies, you have television shows, you have series. You can I watch the NFL Red Zone on Fubo. You can record your movies, record your shows. Big, big fan of Fubo. And and and, and it's not just because we're on Fubo. I really got Fubo, canceled my cable, saving tons of money, and loving life with Fubo, especially watching Lights Out Extreme Fight. And I'm not getting paid for that pluck, by the way. But it's a true, I'm being honest. I have Fubo Blake, and it's awesome. Raul Mendoza looks like he has been collected back on his feet now. Little bit wobbly, not surprised after the amount of damage he took. They want to sit him back down. Yeah, what a knockout. The power in some of those strikes by Andrew Carvajal. Wow. Dynamite in those hands. Mendoza, he needs to work on, on, on his takedown defense uh, a little bit, but I like his jiu-jitsu. We never saw his boxing. Most of the fight was on the ground. It's a, a tough loss for Mendoza, but again, he's an amateur, so it doesn't count. You know, he, had, official record. he had three great submission attempts, a very close double wrist lock in the first round, a triangle that didn't look like it was extremely close, but a, a somewhat of a threat. And then a double wrist lock in the second round that looked like it might have gotten, might have been able to, to get that arm behind the back and potentially finish. But Andrew Carvajal, with his dominant wrestling and grappling, was able to stay on top and land vicious strikes to end the fight. Saw AJ Hutchkins won the, the previous fight. He was already talking about he wants to fight again in November. 
I hope we see Andrew Carvajal again in the future in Lights Out Cage again as well. He looked real good. Quick break, and we'll be back with more alongside Blake Bulletproof Troop. I am Pablo Alcina, loving life here on Fubo Sports. Quick break, and we'll be back with more Lights Out Extreme Fighting 11. Former NBA superstar Gilbert Arenas and king of NBA Twitter Josiah Johnson talk to the biggest names in sports and culture on No Chill. Check out the latest episode where Jill and Joe break down the Damian Lillard trade and the impact it will have on the league. No Chill is available on Fubo Sports, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcast. No Chill with Gilbert Arenas. We continue on Lights Out Extreme Fighting 11. Let's go back to Tyson Johnson. Ladies and gentlemen, after two minutes, 54 seconds into round number two, your winner by way of knockout and new lights out lightweight champion of the world, Andrew Carvajal. Okay. Andrew Carvajal getting the lights out amateur belt let's go to bonnie jill laughlin inside the cage with our winner andrew when did you know that you could impose your wrestling on him uh we wrestle anybody we wrestle everybody nobody's as good as me that's just how it is so everyone can get it i love your confidence now you knew that you can open up that ground and pound when did you know you got him uh, uh he was out really early the ref let it go a little past thank you ref you know, he's probably not too happy about it, but it's how it goes. And your emotion that you're walking out with the lightweight amateur championship belt. Yeah, we're, we're a featherweight. We, we take all the belts, though. Um, we'll take welterweight next. We'll see, we'll see who, uh, who takes the fight. All right, congratulations. Appreciate it. Andrew Carvajal with a victory. Break, and we'll be back with more.
live on Lights Out Extreme Fighting. The last fight was for the lightweight amateur Lights Out title. And now this one is going to be for the featherweight Lights Out title in the amateur division with Blake Bulletproof Troop. I am Pablo Alcina, in case you're seeing the belts out there for the amateur divisions in Lights Out. Again, they fought lots of fights. There's actual tournaments. And Andrew Carvajal became the lightweight um, Lights Out champion. And now we have the featherweight amateur Lights Out champion coming up. If it goes anything like that last title bout, it should be a banger. We saw Andrew Carvajal come out and turn his opponents a lights out in brutal fashion. We have six pro fights, but again, the amateur fights are just as good. We've seen three fights. What have we seen so far? A knockout in 30 seconds. A submission by a former um, Oregon linebacker. And now the third one, we saw wrestling. We saw jujitsu attempts, and we saw a ground and pound. And we saw someone get stretched out here. That's what type of fight that third one was. What a banger. We still have the main event, Musa Talver taking on Albert Morales. That fight is amazing. Bad blood in that one. Sean Merriman was with us. They said, you have to see that fight because they are going to go all out trying to finish each other off. And by the way, we have six, six pro fights total. Another amateur for the lightweight, for the featherweight. Um, let's, uh, these are the pro fights that we have. Talk to me about Albert Morales and Musa Tolliver. You train with Albert Morales. How ready is he for this one? Albert has fought at the biggest league in the U UFC, and he's also fought Bellator and a bunch of other places. He's a former Lights Out Extreme Fighting Champion as well. So you know Albert is always going to be prepared. He's one of the hardest workers of the gym. We trained together at Black House for years, and I'm always excited to watch him get inside the cage because he brings the fight. The co-main event, Tony, uh, Tommy Aaron, they call him the Spaniard. He's going to fight. Just became a dad two weeks ago of twin boys. So he must have this huge smile. Lots of non-sleeping nights. Did you ask him, was it hard to train with your wife about to deliver a baby? You know, I didn't ask him, but I would imagine that it's got to be really difficult. But I'd also imagine that he probably has some light frustrations and stuff that he <laughs> wants to take out on his opponent. So we'll see if Sergio... Uh, Quinones is ready for that dad strength that Tommy Aaron now brings to the cage. We're about getting uh, about ready to get this fight underway. Again, the medical personnel has to be in position because the last one ended the way it ended. They had to, you know, stretch, stretch them out, out. Stretch them out. Say how it is. But now they're almost ready for the next fight. You know, that's one of, one of the risks when you step inside the cage. You are potentially paying a massive price to get inside of that cage and as we saw with uh, Raul Mendoza he paid a big price getting stretched out tonight. In case you guys just tuned in let's show you a little recap of the night so far beginning with the first fight now watch this tic tac toe toma tu tomate the knockout by Antonio Ruelas in fight one fight two is you Blake. AJ Hodgkins former Oregon linebacker came out and had a dominant performance almost flawless victory and he secured the rear naked choke submission during round two and it hodgkins already saying he wants to fight again and then fight three was an andrew carvajal wrestling show and it ended with this round the pound yeah look at that wow impressive by carvajal and he has good physique he said Lightweight, but he can go up, he can go down, he'll fight whoever, and he's kind of, kind of that great shape, that great size that he can go up featherweight, he can go down, he can go up, bantamweight, some weight, or whatever he wants. No, I think that size helps in fights, but skill is king. You know, and he trains with a bunch of killers, Jacob Rosales, Badger Crew, a bunch of very tough guys here in Southern California. So he comes from a great camp, so he's not scared of the guy. 155. He said he's, what, a 45er? Just fought for the 55 title. Said he's going up to welterweight next. Quick commercial break. And by the way, he's not only a MMA a color commentator, he's also a professional wrestler. Can you put on the persona? Quick break. Bulletproof troop. Pablo Alcina. We're going to get ready for more knockouts. Quick break and more Lights Out Extreme Fighting 11 is next.
We are inside Infinite Reality Studios. This is Lights Out Extreme Fighting 11. We've seen two knockouts, two submissions, and we still have more than three hours of fighting action live on Fubo, taking place right here down in Long Beach. LBC is loving Lights Out Extreme Fighting. We have a great crowd here, man. The energy is just fabulous. Lights Out Extreme Fighting. Every time we put on these shows, the fights just keep getting better and better. The level of the talent, but the matchmaking by Sean Merriman and his people is just top notch. Absolutely. So every time we have a card, I'm like, man, that might have been the best card yet. And this one, with the first three fights that we've had, this might be the best card we've had yet. Look at the fans enjoying themselves here. We've seen three fights, three finishes. Someone got stretched out. It is, has been a night of bangers, and it will continue for the next seven fights that we have on the card. The ladies are having a good time. The guys are having a good time. Young people, old people, all ages, all races, everybody inside loving Lights Out Extreme Fighting. November 18th is Lights Out Extreme Fighting 12. We will be back for that one. And this is just gonna keep growing and growing and growing. It's gonna be awesome, Blake, when we say Lights Out Extreme Fighting show number 100, because we will get there. This just Lights Out Extreme Fighting 11, my third show working alongside Blake Bulletproof Troop, pro MMA fighter in his own right. More than 14 fights as a pro. 14 professional MMA fights, and I actually fought for the Lights Out Extreme Fighting light heavyweight title. I lost a decision to uh, Andre, uh, ooh, I'm not even sure what his last name is now. Fighting's really hurt my memory, but I was also supposed to fight for the Lights Out Extreme Fighting Heavyweight title, a fight that was canceled due to COVID. Yeah, so, again, there's still time. I know, show them guns, Blake. I think there's at least one more, one or two more fights in there. Maybe we'll get you in the cage. And Sean Merriman, have you seen his videos? He's training. I don't know, Merriman. Merriman versus Blake inside the cage. Oh, who the, the watch fight that, that we're going to probably see is Sean Merriman against Bobby Lashley. Sean's been calling you out, Bobby. Where are you at, my man? Yeah, lots of people talk, but they don't deliver. Sean Merriman delivers. He's here alongside. You're going to jump in here again, Sean, as we're here with Blake and Sean Merriman. What a great card so far, Sean. We said at the beginning of the show, you're going to see knockouts, you're going to see submissions, you're going to see people getting stretched out. Well, we saw all that in the first three fights. Yeah, that was, <laughs> that's the kind of crazy part. Look, you want to open up a card that way tonight, right? I mean, when people first tune in and looking what, what lights out extreme fight breakers to the table, and I think they saw it. You know, these some, a couple of these guys, we just saw A.J. Hoskins, man. I, and I, I've been talking about him for the last few months. He wasn't joking when he said that he had three opponents pull out. Three opponents pulled out. One of the guys just didn't even show up. He just said, I don't want to fight that guy. Just didn't show up. So kudos to, to his opponent, man, for stepping in there last minute because most people would. He took that on like three days notice, got it done, came in here. But I'm telling people right now, it's about these former athletes, former NFL players, former football players that's going to be transitioning into lights out extreme fighting. Yeah, now, what I was saying on, on the broadcast also, all these former players, they played in the NFL. So it's not only that they need the money, they need the adrenaline and the rush. So when you're no longer competing at that level, being able to then fight, come here, I think it gives them life again. Is that what you're seeing for these athletes? Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. And, you know, that's one thing, you know, obviously being a former football player myself, that transition is tough for anybody. You're looking for that next adrenaline. You're looking for that next competition. And for a lot of these guys, there's no next level. And so you have a, a guy that maybe... Played in college, only played a couple uh, years in the NFL. Didn't really get a shot, didn't get an opportunity. Maybe got injured. Maybe got cut and never got a chance to get picked back up. These guys are ready to go. You right. know, they, they have built up tension and frustration. And as you see tonight, he, he took it out on somebody. Sean, I want you to be with us here as we recap fight number one again. Let's roll it. We're going to show you the whole fight, but let's not call it like it happened. Let's call it like if it were live. So here we go, fight one of the night. And it's Ruelas with the long hair taking on Valtiera with the black shorts. Now Valtiera looking good early, dodging and moving. Both guys totally respect each other. Both oh, nice undefeated. Both undefeated fighters and we see Valtiera come in and land a very nice right hand on Ruelas early on in the fight. Valtiera again, trying to measuring him out. He's looking at Ruelas in front of him. And now we're gonna see Valtiera just taking his time 
Ruelas could have done a little bit more, and he was kind of waiting for Valtierra and waiting for his opening. And Sean, go play by play on me. What do you see here? You know, I, I just see him. He has a lot of patience, man. He's, he's really calm. He's not overacting. He's starting to pick his shot. I, I think that when he got up against the cage, he obviously knew that his back was against the wall, and that's when he started to unleash on him with those big knockouts. Perfect knee placement. Blake, we saw the boxing and the precision right there by Royalist. Yeah, the step in knee followed by a barrage of strikes that just came lightning quick. Four, five, six strikes before the referee could even step in. What a fantastic knockout for uh, Ruelas. That was a fun first fight. And then the last fight we saw, Sean, I want you to talk to the people because we saw a belt in there. So explain to the viewers what are these belts that they're fighting for. You know, we talked this, about this, and I think it's so important for us to have these amateurs seen. Uh, not a lot of opportunity for the amateurs to be seen out there, and, and you hope that they get put on the map early, right? You want people to see them early and watch them grow. We want these amateurs to grow with us. That's why, you know, it was it was, uh, it was was great that football was on board to say, you know, we want these guys, we want to show the progression. You know, these guys, AJ, you know, AJ's going to turn pro with us at some point. But well, we got a chance to see him as an amateur and what he's going to look like this next time he stepped out into the lights out extreme fighting cage. Yeah, and uh, we saw Andrew Carbohol right there with the wrestling and the ground to pound, and you gave him the lights out, light, uh, light amateur belt. But explain to the people why you do that. Why do you have belts for the amateurs? Yeah, you know, for us, it, you want to be a top at whatever you do. And that belt symbolizes that you're the best that's been. Somebody, by the way, I've already had text messages and DMs of people, other fighters, other amateurs watching this. They're saying they're coming in and taking that strap. And that's why you give these guys, you know, belts coming up in the rankings. And that holds a lot of weight. You know, these guys are amateur champions. They're going to become pro champions with us. And that's very important that we start them out and be able to have that opportunity. Blake, anything to throw in there? Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to watch these amateurs because all three of the amateurs who have fought tonight and won show extreme potential. I can see any of them going pro in a relatively near future. Maybe AJ a little bit down the line, but for 10 months in, that kid is a monster. Keep an eye on any of the amateurs you see fighting here Lights Out Extreme Fighting. Sean, let's roll the second fight of the night. Yeah. We talk here with Sean Merriman, former NFL great. I keep saying if it wasn't for injuries, you'd be in the Hall of Fame, baby. You are great. Now, there's A.J. Hodgkins, played your position, linebacker. But he looks like a different weight class. He cuts weight beautifully. He's going to be a monster here. Yeah, he said he walks around about 205 or 210, something like that. <laughs> but you can tell, look at that, the, the, the football player legs. When I look at them, they're big, they're explosive. He's still got those football player legs. And watch him. You know, a few times in this in this round here alone, he goes low and he just explodes into him. That's why I said that these guys look at he's, he's comfortable with the kick. I don't know if you guys got a chance to see his opponent's uh, legs on the camera here. I mean, his legs were pretty beat up, but he's so powerful, man. He's so relaxed. You see him and he's he's calm. He's talking to his guy, and you know, I, I love these guys that calm because those are sometimes the most scariest guys. This is just a, another day in the park for them. Is Hodgkins going to fight at Lights Out Extreme Fighting 12 or 13, or is he going to go somewhere else, or, or we, we have him locked in? We, we got him locked in. We, we want him here. Um, you know, we brought him over from Texas, and we were struggling finding opponents for this guy. I mean, he is going to be an animal. I would like to see I would like to see AJ get a little bit better with his striking. His grappling, his ground game is outstanding. What I would like to see him is be a little bit more active with his hands, because most of the time, with these guys that are natural wrestlers or natural grapplers, the easiest thing to do is go back to that when they get in trouble. Him, him, I, like here, I, he's exposing himself just a little bit too much for me. I wanted him to see him get more, just get more active with his hands because he knows that anytime he gets in trouble, he can always go back to his grapple. Has he told you how many amateur fights he wants under his belt before oh, going pro? He, listen, this guy, if he could fight again tonight, he would. You know, he, he was already grabbing me on the way out, <laughs> saying he wanted to get back in there, so we'll, we'll try to get him. Booked on for our next call. We'll be back here in Long Beach, uh, November 18th. We'll be back, and I'm hoping to get AJ back in this card. This fight, uh, Blake, if you want to recap a little bit, Johnny Garcia, he was game. Again, four people told AJ, I'm not going to fight you. Johnny said, yeah, I'll take the fight. Tried, but AJ Hodges is too, too much of a beast. Yeah, and had great strategy coming in. Kept himself a distance, picked his shots, and then when Gianni came a little too close, ended up taking it down, advancing to extremely dominant positions like we see him here in Mount, landing some big strikes from top position. Yeah, just a great size for him. What a 
future. Just 27 years old. Again, he's an amateur, but he was a, a football player, so that kind of transition. But I see a bright, bright future for A.J. Hodgkins. I do, I do, man. And one of the things, uh, you know, he played with Justin Herbert. He played with Justin Herbert, and they were teammates back in the day. But, man, this guy, he has a, he has a name. He has a built-in name out there in Oregon already. And uh, I, I'm just looking to just watch watch him grow his brand. He, he's good on the mic. That's one thing I love guys with personality and and also not just talking talk anybody can talk but when you back it up that, that's a completely different ball game. That was the first round just simply dominated by AJ Hodgkins. The second one was more of the same. You're watching lights out extreme fighting 11. We are live. We are waiting for the ambulance to get in position for the next fight until the medical staff is in position they cannot start the fights that's why the little bit of a delay between fights but hey when somebody's lights get taken out you know that's what happens but luckily we have here sean merriman sean so this is lights out 11. the next one is 12. when is lights out extreme fighting 100 because we're going nowhere <laughs> is that is that your vision for lights out yeah, you, you know what us, man. We, we want to keep giving these guys an opportunity. Um, there's a lot of great promotions out here. We understand that. But we, you know, we're starting to get calls and people reaching out from all over the country come to fight in our car. That's how I found AJ. You know, AJ was one of the guys that reached out to me, and I said, hey, where are you fighting out of? He said, Texas. All right, well, come on. That was my next. That was my answer. So we're getting more and more up-and-coming guys to come over to Lakeside Extreme Fight to give them an opportunity here. Speaking of an opportunity, in English, your color commentator is Blake Bulletproof Troop. In Spanish, is Echo in Mexico, Efrain Escudero. Both have told me that they are, Pablo, I'm itching to talk to Sean to get inside that cage and to fight again. Would you take a call for Blake Bulletproof Troop or Efrain Escudero to get inside the cage? But mind you, they come with big price tags, though. <laughs> I don't know if we can afford it, man. I don't know if we can afford it, guys. But, you know, it's great, man, because one thing I've always appreciated is guys who've been there, done that, and has, has bled in this sport to get an opportunity to come and do what you guys are doing. But also, too, have the capabilities of getting back in there, right? I mean, that itch never really goes away. And then you're sitting here, you're walking. It's no different than me walking out to a football game, and I want to get back on the field and line back up, put my hand in the dirt. You, you know the feeling, Blake. I mean, Sitting there calling the fight is great. You got a passion, love for it. But sometimes that itch comes calling and you want to get back in the cage. That's exactly how I'm feeling right now. I am enjoying sitting at the commentary table, but something in me wants to fight a little bit still. It's fun being a part of the sport, but it's different being on the sidelines than in the trenches. Sean, if you would have not been a, a football player, do you think you would have been a fighter? Was that in your mentality uh, or no, back when you were younger? Oh, no, no, I, I would have been in there, for sure. And, you know, my passion and love has always been in combat sports in general. And I think that the wave is going to happen here where you're going to get those linebackers and strong safeties from SEC, from the Big Ten, those big strong safeties coming in making that transition because as you see a guy like A.J., Physically, athletically, he can hang with anybody. Now, they're going to be behind the curve a little bit starting out because these guys have just been doing it longer. So you need a couple, some years of training, get with the right team, get with the right camp. But we know, we just had, uh, we, we had Jacob, uh, Jordan Bell, NBA player, Jordan Bell, whom I sparred against, who I sparred against, played the NBA, and he can go. This guy, he's an athletic freak. You're going to get a young Jordan Bell to have a couple years in the NBA to say, you know what? I can make some money over here fighting, so I'm going to come and do that. Yeah, and again, for these guys, maybe it's not even just the money, but it's the lights, it's the adrenaline, it's the challenge, the the one-on-one -on -one again to go in there. So I'm looking forward to seeing more of these athletes. You know, the average NFL career is three to four years. You're talking about 27-year-old in great shape. He's got nowhere to go. So I love what you're doing here with Lights Out and for them. It, it's a privilege to, to play uh, in the NFL. It's a privilege to play at a big D1 college. And to be able to transition and live your dream somewhere else and, and compete again, that's the, that's the ultimate goal with a lot of these guys. Yeah, I know. Again, hats off to you, Sean. What you are building here, top notch. We have former UFC, former Bellator fighter saying this is the same. What Sean Merriman building here is incredible. And plus, on the mics, you brought the passion and the energy in this group right here. Quick break, and we'll be back with more. Sean Merriman, Black Bull Group Troop. I am Pablo Alcina. You're watching Lights Out Extreme Fighting 11.
live, but the fight you're seeing was from a little bit earlier today. We're getting ready for the next fight while the medical staff gets in position. We're going to replay this fight. This is round two, Andrew Carvajal and Raul Mendoza. Carvajal dominating, using his wrestling. Yeah, this was a title fight for the 155-pound amateur belt. We saw Carvajal coming out, and like you said, using fantastic wrestling to take down and control Raul Mendoza. However, um, it was not the wrestling itself that won him the fight. He utilized the wrestling to get into a dominant position and land a nasty KO. But Mendoza was digging for submissions. Here we see him looking for a double wrist lock on Carvajal's right arm. You can see him, you can see him tangled up there. Carvajal's doing the right thing to try and step around, but right here, Mendoza almost exposes that hand. If he was able to get it behind Carvajal's back, he might have been able to land the submission. Carvajal did a fantastic job of escaping there, getting his arm free, and they get back to their feet here, and Mendoza went to try and counter take down Carvajal, but the better wrestler, Carvajal, was able to turn his opponent back against the cage, drop down, pick him up, and take him to the mat again. And I believe this takedown was led to the finish of the fight with that nasty ground and pound that left Mendoza sleeping on the mat. And the reason we're playing the replay of the fight, oh, so the, the ground and pound also by Carver Hall here. He has Mendoza's right arm pinned. You'll see when the camera angle changes. The right arm is pinned under the shin, as you can see here. And the left arm is trapped on the far side of Carver Hall's head. We call this a crucifix. And it leaves Mendoza in a spot where he can't defend his head. Carvajal just lands shot, shot, shot. They're not big, but they add up and chip away at his opponent's health. Later on, in about 30 seconds, you're going to see the ground and pound. Now, you be the judge at home. I feel the referee was a bit late. Blake feels maybe, but he wanted to give the fighter a chance, especially for a title fight, even if it's just an amateur. I felt he was very late on it, and, and it cost him. It cost him serious. But you guys decide when you see, when you see it. That was just my personal opinion, Blake. Now we'll, we'll see it again. Maybe we'll think different. So see, see Carvajal on top, owning this position. You'll see him lock the legs down here to secure half guard. He wants to stay here. He realizes the half guard's open. He hears his corner yelling, slides the right arm out. A very dominant fight ending position. Lands a couple shoulder strikes there, and then postures up and starts raining down hammer fists and punches. Here's the knockout right here. See, I think he's out right here. I think he's out. I think he's unconscious yeah, he's already. Out. I counted seven blows after you said yeah, I think he's yeah. out. After watching it again, man, he stopped it way late. Quick break and we'll be back with more. This is Lights Out Extreme Fighting.
We are live, Lights Out Extreme Fighting 11. We are ready for the next fight. Alongside Blake Bulletproof Troop, I am Pablo Alcina. Let's go to Tyson Johnson, our cage announcer. Please welcome to the Lights Out cage, Andrew Campos. Andrew Campos entering first. Big smile. Oh, he seems happy. Always two different styles. The one who enters happy and smiley, and then the one who enters with a poker face. Which style do you like more? You know, I think the guy that looks the most comfortable in the moment, whether it's being intense, dancing, the guy who's out there being himself is who I think has the advantage. And you can tell this kid has a ton of swagger in the way that he came out here to the ring. And another thing worth mentioning about the way he came out, he's been standing behind the curtain for about 20 minutes, waiting to come out, had been prepared for 20 minutes to come out here. But the last fight, as you, as you guys saw, um, when the guy was stretched out, so we had to wait for another ambulance to get here before we could resume the fights. So he's been standing there for 20 minutes, and then comes out and still has this level of energy and swagger in his step. And this fight for the featherweight amateur title for lights out. What a great atmosphere. We've seen a knockout. We've seen a ground and pound. We've seen a submission. Haven't seen a decision yet. Wouldn't mind if we don't see one, but we might we might get one eventually. A lot of swagger in Andrew Campos. I am a fan. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Lights Out Cage, Byron Hale. Byron Valle bringing a ton of fans. He's got at least 70 deep waving him in. That's a great crowd for Byron Valle. You know, and I think it adds a lot of value to coming inside the cage. Given you're the only person getting inside the cage, but when you have 50, 100 people outside the cage screaming, making noise, it gives you a certain level of energy. And whether they're cheering for you or booing for you, I think it gives you the same level of energy. You know, and having a crowd that is electric for your fight, in my opinion, brings out much better fights. He's got all his friends and family. He's smiling, and oh, this is the new one. He's dancing. I said there was two types, the smiling, the poker face, and now we have the dancer as well. This is full swag on this one. You know, I've been really impressed with a lot of the amateurs tonight. I always am a Lights Out Street Fighter because they have incredible fighters, whether professional or amateur. But these kids are fighting under the brightest lights of their career, and they're coming out cool, confident, collect, with swag. And it really impresses me. These kids are the future of the sport. We actually had, saw like three amateur fights that weren't even on TV before, and they had extreme talent. Little youngster, I forgot his name. Who was that first one that we saw fighting? He looked real good. I'm sure we'll see him coming up in future events. This one's going to be a good one. Byron Valle versus Andrew Campos for the featherweight amateur lights out extreme fighting fight. So here's a fun little statistic. Tell me. We're three for three on the red corner winning oh. thus far. So statistically speaking, I would imagine maybe the blue corner is supposed to get a win. Uh, are you are you that person that goes through the roulette and if you see red seven times in a row, you money on black because it's got to it's got to balance out, right? I don't gamble with my money. I gamble with my health. That's why I fight <laughs> MMA. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape. 23 years old for Campos, 20 for Valle. Perfect record for Valle, 3 and 0, 3 and 1 for Andrew Campos. Let's go to Tyson. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout will be three three-minute rounds in the featherweight division. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout is being brought to you live by Fubo TV. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout is for the Lights Out Featherweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This fighter stands five feet, nine inches tall. He weighed in at 145 pounds. He represents UFC Fit with a mixed martial arts record of three wins and one defeat. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Andrew Campos. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner stands five feet, nine inches tall. He went in at 143 pounds. 
He represents Uprise MMA with an undefeated record of three wins and zero defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Byron Bear. Your referee for this championship bout will be Sensei Louis Comey. All right, guys, we went over the rules in the back. I want you to protect yourself at all times and obey my command at all times. When the bell rings, I want you to come in and fight. Gloves, good luck to both. Andrew Campos, Byron Valle. For the featherweight amateur lights out title. The atmosphere is electric in here. They, they packed it for this amateur fight. And the fight's underway. Valle in the red corner. Kick by Valle down low and strong. Campos response. Yeah, that was almost like tip for tap. Pop, pop, right back. Anything you can do, I can do better. Seth Campos now looking for the takedown. Valle said, no, no, I got your back, baby. Let's see if he's able to capitalize on this position. He's behind Campos, but he doesn't know he's got a hook in now as well. I feel able to utilize that hook for a takedown, but Campos is doing the right thing by trying to get his back to the cage and kind of peel off. And this all started from a takedown attempt by Compo. Shot him kind of from a distance. I was able to drag him back up, get behind him, and now has Compos on the cage. Utilizing great head position to keep him. Neither one really looking for a takedown. Right now, a little measure of strength. You know, Vias do the right thing here by kind of grinding, which we call it the unicorn horn, as if you had a unicorn horn coming out of your head, and you kind of grind it like that, like jamming that. Whoa! Whoa, good punch. Oh, 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 right to connect. Uppercut. One, two, now going for the takedown. And hits up. Sets up the takedown with a barrage of strikes, and hits the takedown of undefeated Brian Vias. That was MMA at its finest. Boxing, a little takedown, a little wrestling. Now looking for the top position for a little ground and pound. He's doing a good job of posturing up so he can get himself in a more vertical position. Oh! He threw timed that, that one by, perfect. Yeah, threw that leg by landing a nice strike. Why fought himself to his feet? Now, lots of times you want a crowd of 70 to cheer you on, but that comes with pressure. Oh, the eye poke. Yeah, I didn't see exactly how it pokes. Sometimes it happens with punches, sometimes it happens with outstretched fingers. I didn't see exactly what happened. But clearly, Compost knew what happened, and his opponent, Brian Byron, as you can tell, got poked in the eye. Oh, but a great, smart move by Valle. Let me regroup here. I took some shots. Yeah, I'm really impressed by Compost there. The, his ability to throw a handful of strikes. Valle did the smart thing, covered up, and it created the opening to change levels and start. Whoa. Oh, yeah, Campos doing real good job ducking the punches, landing his own. Oh, it almost looked like a DDT. I did a, or Campos did a great job of once that turned into an exchange and both guys started swinging, he changed direction, oh, 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 dropped levels and got the takedown. He's now back on top of Campos, or Fire. That was a takedown, might have hurt him more. His face went straight into the mat. Back to his feet. Smart by Campos. He's winning the boxing battle. Why go in the ground? Up and down. Wow. Impressive. Campos is having fun out there. Now. This time, Campos has landed in hard side control, which is a much more dominant position. First two takedowns, he was, he was trapped within the legs, tangled in the legs in full guard. He's now passed by his legs entirely and can get to a more dominant position, or is it a more dominant position to land strikes, especially submissions? You can see Valle trying to utilize his left leg to trap uh, Campos' right leg, but Campos is doing the right thing by keeping that right knee tight. Byron Valle came into this fight dancing, singing, saying hi to friends, but round one ends. Oh, oh big up kick. kick. Good up kick. Good up kick. Oh, and Valle has a cut on his nose, though, and a welt on his head. Now look at Campos. Campos has to be careful. That's twice now he's popping up to his feet trying to land some ground to pound. And this second time he ate an up kick, which is a devastating attack. And you can't put yourself in this position. Let's look at some of the highlights from round one. Here's him throw, here's Campos throwing some bombs and then changing levels and getting a nice takedown out of it. He 
We saw him do this several times in the round. Again, here's another takedown that he landed. This time you can see he's stuck in the guard. And Valle does the right thing on bottom by throwing up some submission attempts. And here's takedown number three, where Campos passes the guard. You can see him pass Valle's legs. Dominant, dominant first round by Andrew Campos. One on the mat, one on the feet. Let's see how Byron Valle responds. What do we tell Byron Blake in the start of round two? Be more aggressive or be more cautious? I think what he needs to do is hold his ground and back up. Don't move forward. In the two later takedowns, he was moving forward. The first one, he was covered during an exchange. But the, as you move towards your opponent, bring your hips to him just like that. And you close the distance for them. Man. So by moving towards the guy who wants to take you down is very counterproductive to staying on your feet. Perfect timing, though, in every single one of the takedowns by Andrew Campbell. It's a little bit too easy. Bayes just walking right in, falling asleep. Yeah, Bayes doing a good job. He went from half guard with a butterfly hook in. Now he's kind of, oh, his combos passes the guard. He's now in side control over Bayes, which is a great position to either transition him out, which is a, a fight finishing position, or attacking the far side arm, which is Bayes' left arm. Campos control round one, controlling the first minute of round two. This for the featherweight amateur lights out extreme fighting title. You see Campos pinning that left or right arm of Valle. Valle was able to escape it. This is one of the dangers of also being against the cage here, is you get stuck in a tough spot when you can't, but then you can also utilize the cage to create an opening like that. And wow, Valle pops up, transitions to top position. Let's see if he's able to secure it and keep it. He's also back. Campos is back. Wow. Transitions on transitions. Baye reviving in this round two. A little spin move. Now Campos looking a little winded. This might come down who has more gas in the tank in the final round. Yeah, we are at the halfway point of the fight. Three three-minute rounds. We are halfway through round two, and we see Baye on Campos' back like we did in the first round. I wasn't able to do anything with it in the first round. Let's see if he can utilize some type of offensive grappling here in the second round. Great job by Campos digging for that underhook in reversing position. Drops, changes levels. Let's see if he gets another takedown on Vi. Oh. And he does. Oh, that was an angry takedown. I think Campos was upset with what Vi did. He said, no, no, this is my fight. I got this under control. Up, up, and away, and brought him back down. Yeah, what is that, four flights now? He might be getting frequent flyer miles on Campos Airlines for this. Why well, doing a great job on bottom, though, of continually throwing up submission attempts. You can see him opening his legs, climbing his legs up. We saw him go, whoa. Yeah, those are up kick, knock that mouthpiece out. Campos is playing a very risky game of striking from that position where you can get kicked in the face by down punk. Ooh. Half time by a finally. Yeah. He was able to sprawl, saw that coming, and that has got to give a lot of confidence to buy being able to finally stuff one of Campos' takedowns. Next time, maybe throw a knee out there. You would have had him. Here comes Campos with a combination. Valle responding. Oh, that was a great knee right there. Oh, Valle now getting a takedown. Okay, Valle. Crowd on their feet. Final 10 seconds of round two. Now he's got the bat. Yeah, Campos did a fantastic job of scrambling back to his feet. Let's see if he's able to... Okay, I was gonna say, let's see if he's able to continue and get top position back. It looked like Baye was a little high there, and he was. <sighs> Another great round for Campos, but Baye is not out of this fight. He's throwing up submission attempts, throwing bombs back whenever he can. Here's another one of the takedowns by Campos. Again, landing in guard position, which is hard to do damage and hard to submit a guy. And here's the explosion for Baye, getting back on top position. Was not able to secure for very long. But this has really been the story of the fight thus far, Pablo. Campos taking down Valle, but Valle got one of his own at the end of round two. Question, how much gas is he wasting on those up, up, and, you know, picking them up for the takedowns? Yes, style points are nice, but you're also wasting a lot of that, that energy and power. You know, you're absolutely right. You are spending a lot of gas in the tank, and you can see Campos looks like he's breathing fairly heavy right now. Significantly harder than Valle is. So you've got to wonder how much he has left in the tank going into this third round. Round three. I have Campos two rounds to none. Let's see what Valle and the Red does. 
Why got caught? He keeps charging forward, though. That's why his hips are getting controlled again by combos. But it looks like he's taking that left. Oh! Let's see if he's able to try and get it in the no. I would like to see Campos here utilize what we call the Von Futrick. He has the left arm of Valle trapped around his neck. If he feeds his left arm under the neck. It was a good thought. Yeah, Campos, went for it. Campos did a great job of staying patient on top of him. That was a, a spectacular takedown. That might have been his best one yet. Yeah, landing in side control is a massive advantage once you get on the ground because you bypass your opponent's legs, which are incredible weapons, especially when they can kick you from the bottom position. Baya trying to get up on his feet, trying to do something. He had an opportunity in the final 15, 20 seconds of round two, but besides that, it's been pretty much all Andrew Kemp. Yeah, particularly once he gets to the more dominant position, so particularly here in side control. He's being patient. He has two minutes left in this round to work. And the referee's very unlikely to stand him up from this dominant of a position. I expect to see him transition to mount relatively soon. Right here, I expect it to come. So, by it, I know Campos needs to know he has this fight one. So, he doesn't want to fall into any any situation where you, you might fall into a submission hole or something. And like we said, he expended a lot of gas on some of these flashing, big, lifting, and slamming takedowns. He just landed another one. He's probably recharging a little bit right now. I'd like to see him step to a dominant position. So I'm just now trying to slide that right knee across to go to Mount. Here it is again. He needs to go right now. It's open. If he can get himself to full mount, he's in a position, or a, a fight-ending position. In fact, the last fight we saw, the guy got stretched out after being mounted and grounded. Power. Byron Valle, undefeated as an amateur. But he's one minute away from getting that first L. Oh, by full mount! Oh. This is what he needs, and he has a bow. Oh, here's a head and arm choke right here. Oh, he loses it because Valle explodes from the bottom. Let's see what Valle can do in this last minute. But this is what we're talking about. Why Campos take any risky chances? He had to fight one. Now Byron Valle has 40 seconds. I'm surprised that he went for a submission there. If I were him, I would own the control mount, posh it up, and throw down some strikes. Because the thing is, you go for a submission, they get out. You know, great, you know, the, it's going, you get mounted, you hit him five times, and he gets out. You hit the dude five times. Combo's staying aggressive from the bottom. Final 20 seconds. Valle has got to do something drastic right now if he wants to walk away, if he wants to keep that undefeated record. Campos knows. He's got this in the bag. He just needs to hold on 10 more seconds. No, oh, he's looking for a triangle choke here. And that's the end of the fight. Too little, too late for Byron Valle. But we still have to wait for the official decision. Break, and we'll be back with more.
I got nervous when I saw a split decision. You know, one of the things my coach always tells me is never leave it to the judges. And as we saw, I had that a 30-27. I could see the third round going to Brian Valle, but I definitely thought Andrew Campos won that fight, so I was surprised to see that split decision. Victory for Andrew Campos, getting the featherweight lights out amateur belt. Sean Merriman putting on the strap. Just put it over the shoulder. Look cool. Let's go to Bonnie Jill Laughlin with the interview with our winner. Andrew, you had a battle out there with your opponent. How does it feel to walk away with the belt? Uh, it feels good. Yeah, it feels good. That's it? It feels good. You're tired? <laughs> uh, I'm a little tired. It was just another fight, so it's okay. Great. Congratulations. Andrew Campos, the new champ, he came in with swag, came in smiling, and he did what he had to do. Lots of takedowns, controlled the fight, and he won by split decision, but I thought he definitely dominated. Yeah, he did a fantastic job of fixing things up. This is fixed martial arts, where you strike, you grapple, submissions, and he showed a variety of different skills in his arsenal, particularly these beautiful slams that he landed throughout the fight. Break and we'll be back with Burke Goes taking on the champion. Lights out of stream fighting 11. We are live and we are rolling. Entering first is Alex Ogas. Ogas. Coming in, bop into the music as well. I was going to say, it looks like he is rapping the lyrics, which means he's probably picked this song out and has been preparing, listening to this song, so this puts him in a place of a, a mental state of warfare. And it looks like he is ready to go to war inside the Lights Out Extreme Fighting cage right now for another Lights Out, Lights Out Extreme Fighting strap. And this one for the Bantamweight Lights Out Amateur title. Ogas is undefeated 3-0. and oh, And he wants that belt around his waist.
ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Lights Out Cage, Michael Burke. Michael Burke entering second. Almost emotionless, kind of out of Burke. Yeah, I like it. No dancing, no bopping, just staring at the camera. Yeah, just here to do business, not having fun, not enjoying himself, just going to work to put his hands in somebody's mouth. You know, sometimes it's those quiet ones that you got to be the most concerned about. Yeah, but he's quiet, but he's got that menacing look. So uh, I'm more of the poker face guy. I'll, I'll sing and dance after the win. But before, I, I like them to come in focus and just, just go in how they do. And that's how Burke's coming in. Yeah, stone cold kill. And now the other huge question, who's winning the battle of the facial hair? Because we have a mustache in one side, we have the little mustache goatee on the other side. It's going to the tail of the tape as we see Michael Burke and Alex Ogas. Yes, yeah, slight height difference. Michael Burke has four inches of height over Alex Ogas. Same weight, but we see a two and one record out of Michael Burke and three and zero oh undefeated by Alex Ogas. This bout is being brought to you live by Fubo Sports TV. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout will be for the Lights Out Burn Weight Championship of the World. And introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This fighter stands 5 feet, 6 inches tall. He weighed in at 140 pounds. He represents the Orange County Regional Training Center with an undefeated record of three wins and zero defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Alex Ola. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner stands 5 feet, 10 inches tall. He weighed in at 139 pounds. He represents Swanson's striking system with a mixed martial arts record of two wins and one defeat. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Michael Burke. Your referee for this championship bout will be Rafael Davis. Pablo, these guys have not broken eye contact since they've gotten the cage. Woo! Look at this standoff right here. The tension. I love it. Oh, and no touch of the gloves either. I don't think there's going to be touching of the gloves right here. This is for the bantamweight amateur lights out title. Oh, gosh, versus Burke. Something tough is going to be a good one. The stairs are still there. Yeah, the intensity in everything that I've seen between these guys since they got inside the cage. This and should be a banger. Fights underway. Ogas landing the first strike with a kick. Burke in the black shorts in the red corner. Another kick by Ogas. Now looking for the takedown. He finds him. Driving him face down into the mat. Well done by Ogas. Oh, Grand move by Burke. Oh, he might have a here. Oh. Help out Ogas. And that was almost like a cartoon little world. You know, they get in a fight, tumble, bam, take down, roll over, pop back up. Burke has his arm around Ogus's neck, though. Ogus drops too much for a takedown here. He could, right like this, he could expose himself to a choke, potentially. The beauty of, of this sport, one simple mistake in the boxing game might cost you in the jiu-jitsu game, the wrestling game. So you have to be alert and aware everywhere. You don't want to take too many chances and get caught. So Ogas is doing a great job of mixing things up. We saw him throw several kicks before going to the takedown. And now we've seen him also trying to go for a single leg takedown. And then coming up to strikes and then going back to the takedown. Being able to mix together different styles of martial arts is what the secret to success is in mixed martial arts. In my opinion. The back of Ogas' shirt, a little uh, back tattooed. Benny Bidi Bici, I came and I conquered. Well, let's see if he can conquer this fight. Oh, nice. Don't connect it. Burke. Because the cage are right that just misses. Oga smiles, but he knows that was too close for comfort. Oga 
thrust has significantly reduced his output. Ooh, so there we see down by Oga. We saw Burke moving forward towards Oga and move towards your opponent, close the distance, making their takedown significantly more. Is he on his back flat down now? He still Man, has a full minute to go. He might finish with his choke right now. Gets, and even if he doesn't get the choke, if he rolls over and he's in full mount, it's like going from the frying pan into the fire. You're going to be face down and get a choke. You want to be face up and get punched in the face. Well, now he's on his back and he's got that lock pretty closed in there. Is this going to finish? I can't tell if he's under the chin, but he does not have great control. He might be under the chin. He might be able to finish this. What Burt needs to do is dramatically change, turn to his left hand side and try and roll and face um, Ogus. Ogus is doing a great him. job. We can't see it from where we're sitting. Can't tell if the choke is in there. Nope, not there now. Burke did a great job of being able to survive there. It looked like he had, Ogus had his arm under his chin. And typically when he get under a guy's chin for a choke and finish it. You can't see from the angle how deep that is. It looks like Burke is fighting them right on. Whoa! Ogus. Punch in the land. Yeah, my submission's not getting through. I'm going to punch you oh, three times. Oh, oh, he's going to tap this in. No, he's going to be saved by the oh. bell. Yeah, he's, he's going to be saved by the bell, barely. And that's the end of the first round. Fun first round. They came in staring at each other. Full fury in their eyes. Ogos breathing hard, but I definitely think he won that round. Oh, absolutely. I believe that he won that round as well. Um, came very close to ending the fight several times. We were naked choke there at the end of the first round. Let's take a look at some of these takedowns by Ogos, which really put him in the dominant positions to do the damage that he did. Here's the takedown that he landed. Uh, with Burke belly down, ended up getting on his back and then fighting for this rear naked choke for about the last 30 to 45 seconds. You can see the arm under the chin, but Burke doing a great job of fighting the supportive hand down so that Ogas is not able to apply enough pressure to get the submission with the choke hold. Burke came in, plenty of confidence, an undefeated record. Ogas, he wants the belt also. Two more rounds to go. Something tells me this one will not get to a decision. These two want to end it here. Ogas, though, he looks winded. I was going to say, he does not look like he has the ability to continue the output that he had in round one. And Burke seems calm, but Ogas is breathing purely mouth breathing and heavy. Let's see if he can get that second win. So you see Burke moving forward towards his opponent, and I think that's going to lead to him getting taken down again by Ogas. Move forward. Oh! A jumping knee that nearly connects. Oh, no, but these are amateurs. You're not allowed to be able to head of an in it. He dropped his down takedown into the throw for the guy's head. Um, but moving towards your opponent is a way that makes their takedown significantly easier to obtain. Which is why I think Burke should stand in place or even back up. Make Ogas come to him. He's a much bigger, longer fight. Oh, that knee by Burke connected. Stun Ogas, and now he's landing some body shots too. Whoa, oh, oh, pulled out by Burke. He might be able to finish this here. Hammer Ogas is just Hammer taking the shots. Ogas turns his back, but there's still two full minutes to go. Hammer fist raining down for Michael. Yeah, he gave his dog. Whoa, oh, Ogas is coming. Bombs. A right by Burke. We set like each other. That one connected. Yeah, that was a body that looked like it hurt Ogas. Ogas was just kind of hanging on to that single leg. Like yeah, the both body blows are hurting Oga. He might stop this. Wow! Oh, Burke delivering blows, and it's over. You know, I think that that was just an exhausted Oga. Took some damage, and he was so tired. He's just like, all right, I'm done. Because he didn't take an incredible amount of damage to be extremely hurt. He got tired under that. But we said it after round one finished. Ogas was breathing so winded. He looked like he couldn't get his air. And then he took a body shot. And then boom, there it went. You know, like he wasn't going to move from that position. But great job. I criticized the referee for not stopping the earlier fight. Perfect decision there. I agree 100% with that. Um, and you're right. It started with that knee to the body. was the first thing that kind of stunned him. He dropped down. And it looked like Burke landed a body kick right before that. And you see here, yeah, he's exhausted. Old guys was kind of pinned in a weird spot, just like, all right, I think I'm done. Yeah, if you see his face, he's wincing completely from the other shot to the body right there. And, and referee did a good job. So people that have never been hit in the body don't realize how damaging it is. I would rather probably be punched in the head than blasted in the body really badly. 
Berg stays calm, loses round one, in my opinion, almost gets finished, comes back out and dominates round two and gets a TKO finish against a very tough Alex Olgas. Would not mind seeing these two run it back in the future. I mean, it was a good fight both ways. It was an amateur fight. It looks like Burke for this weight class is just a little better. Let's go to Tyson with our official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, at the one minute, 14 seconds into round number two, your winner by way of TKO, Right out, bang right, champion of the world, Michael Burke. Michael Burke getting the strap from Sean Merriman, bantamweight, amateur, lights out, champion. And Bonnie Jill Laughlin waiting to talk with our winner. Michael Burke, you had difficulty in that first round. How were you able to bounce back and get that confidence back? Well, I'll just do what I do, throw hands the best I can, and just keep TKOing these people, you know? Anytime I can, I will. Fucking love this shit. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it, folks. He loves this. All right, congratulations. You're Bantam weight champion. Thank you, Bonnie. Michael Burke, congratulations to the victory. Break, and we'll be back with Guzman taking on Meeks. Our pro fights are next. Lights Out Extreme Fighting with Blake Bulletproof Troop. I am Pablo Alcina. Our official fights, our amateur fights are done. We're going to our pro fights. We are here for several more hours. You're watching Lights Ladies Out Extreme Fighting 11. Welcome to the Lights Out Cage. Dequan Meeks. Daquan Meeks entering first, undefeated as a pro, fighting out of Nevada. His last three fights were canceled. So it's been a while since Meeks has fought. His last fight, back in August 2022. 
I was talking to him yesterday at weigh-ins, and he's extremely oh. whoa, excited to be here. Almost just hurt himself before even stepping into the lights on a street fighting cage. The doctor might need to go check on him. I hope he's okay. Let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Lights Out Cage, Miguel Guzman. Making his pro debut is Miguel Guzman. Six amateur fights. Got in good work. He has great striking. He can go on the mat. But he said, now I want to go pro. And this is his pro debut. Peels his shirt off before he even gets cage that. This guy is ready to get to work. Put us there, Blake. Put us in the mind of a fighter about to make his pro debut. What's he think? You know, I'm not sure what his amateur level experience is because that would change my perspective potentially. He's got six amateur fights. So the kid's probably ready. But here's the thing. This is probably the biggest stage that he has fought on thus far. He looks cool, calm, and collect. But you know there's got to be a little bit of nerves involved when you're coming and fighting in front of such a massive audience on such a big stage with the bright lights, light out, lights out of stream fighting. He looks ready, though. I mean, he pulled that shirt off before he was even all the way down the ramp. I'll tell you what, these pros have big shoes to fill after those amateur fights that we saw so far. Four fights, three finishes, one decision, which is the split decision. Let's go to the tail of the tape for this fight. Flyweight, 24 years old for Miguel Guzman, 26 for Daquan Meeks. This 125-pound uh, flyweight pro debut for Miguel. Undefeated Daquan, 1-0. Ladies and gentlemen, this professional fight will be three. Five-minute rounds in the flyweight division. And it is the first, fighting out of the blue corner. This fighter stands five feet, five inches tall. He weighed in at 125 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, with a mixed martial arts record of one win and zero defeats, please welcome Daquan Meeks. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, stands five feet, seven inches tall. He weighed in at 124 pounds. He's making his MMA debut. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Miguel Guzman. Your referee for this bout will be Milan Ayers. One thing worth noting is Guzman's ears are chewed up, meaning this kid probably has a relatively high pedigree in grappling which could be a huge advantage for him here in this fight against Jaquan Meeks. Yeah, those cauliflower ears. Yeah, people look for muscles before fights. No, look at a guy's ears. That'll tell you a lot ready more ready than a bicep. Ready to fight? <laughs> <laughs> the fight's underway. This one's a pro fight. This one matters for your records, Guzman and Meeks. Meeks. Out of the blue corner. He sees a kick hard from Miguel. Yes, Michael please. Guzman. Guzman is, whoa, nice little exchange of Juan Meeks closes the distance and tries to turn this into, whoa. Well, I like the start of this one. Miguel, the clear reach advantage. Yes, yeah, significantly longer than Juan Meeks. Has a great jab that he was pumping out. And he threw a really big body kick. Or, oh, there Ooh. it is again. And something worth noting, whoa. Man. Man, these flyweights just yeah. get off quick. Guzman throwing punches with Tons of bad intentions. Oh, good knee. Oh, elbows allowed in amateur? Oh, no, this is pro fight. Sorry. This is pro. Yeah, yeah we're allowed elbows and elbows and knees to the head. Yeah, no, it, it's all on now. Yeah, I'd like to see Guzman go back to his long range attacks. There, he pumped out the jab and another body kick. So, like I was saying earlier, Guzman is a southpaw. Usually, his right leg is forward, which means his left leg is on the back side. So, when he throws a body kick, it lands on the right side of Meek's body, which is where his liver is. If you land a good shot on a guy's liver, it can be fight ending. 
Oh, nice straight right to the chest. Lots of people don't throw those punches to the body. That one connected. Again, now Meeks with a kick, responding Guzman, but he misses. Yeah, so Meeks, oh, whoa, he wobbled him a little bit. Just quickly stunned Meeks with that, uh, I don't know if that was a straight left or a straight right. Then Ooh. hit him again with that body kick. Those are going to add up. You can hear uh, Guzman's corner saying, don't load up. And he's, had, he's coaching his fighter to be very smart about the exchanges that he gets himself in and being smart about the things that he throws out. Oh. To the head. He changed it up before the straight, straight to the chest, then straight up high, and he got Guzman looking down, expecting it to the chest. Good boxing by Meeks. Uppercut by Guzman. Little elbow that connects. going to say nice elbow from the inside there by Guzman. Guzman's doing a fantastic job of mixing it up. With how chewed up Guzman's ears are, I figured we'd see more grappling out of him thus far. But he is doing a fantastic job of utilizing strikes on the feet. There we saw him go for the, the rear hook with the left hand, also targeted towards Meek's liver. Guzman needs to be careful stepping in, though. Meeks is throwing really powerful hooks. He does not want to be at hook range. He wants to keep this fight at straight punch range. Yeah, and Guzman knows he has such a reach advantage. And even his elbows are so long. I expect to see more elbows. Ooh, that knee looked like it hurt Meeks. It only stunned him for a second, but it looked like it landed very nicely. And attacking a guy's body is so much more devastating than people realize. You've never been hitting the body extremely hard. You just don't understand. But it shuts you down. Especially on the flyweights that they have no fat around the body. If you can place it right in the button, like boxers say, you can have the body crumbling. Meeks has Guzman against the fence. A little knee right there for Meeks. Had an opening, but didn't unleash it. Yeah, I'm surprised Meeks just let him off the cage. Oh, good body blows by Meeks. I think the best work by Meeks has been to the body. Hey, he has very powerful hooks. It seems to be one of his best or all only weapons that we've seen thus far. There we saw a great right hand out of him. I'd like to see him follow up on some of these strikes. He's landed a few good body shots, maybe dropping for a takedown, following those strikes up with another attack. What I like about this one, I think we're going to see striking. The previous ones saw lots of takedowns. Neither one here wants to take down. They want to hit you. And they almost seem like they want to hit the other guy that much more after they get hit, too. Yeah. Where it's not like, oh, I'm going to take this guy down. It's like, no, I'm going to punch this guy in his face. Yeah, I think this one's going to be all on the feet. Good knee by Meeks looking for that Muay Thai clinch. Delivered a couple of knees. I'd like to see again more straight, long-range attacks out of Guzman. Ooh. He has a significant reach advantage in his hands and his feet. I'm surprised he's not. Ooh, another knee to the body there. He has really been working Jaquan Meeks' body throughout this first round with body kicks and knees. Another kick to the body. And again, this is the pro debut for Miguel Guzman. Looking solid, not nervous at all for his pro debut. Oh, oh the body. Let's go. Yeah, that's good. Oh, the referee's still looking closer. Oh. You know, I'm. Like I said earlier, we said I'm not a fan of reference letting fighters fight. Ooh, you we really have to finish a guy. I don't think it's serious enough damage for him to stop, but I'm not mad at that. that no, not at all. Stoppage for a professional fight. That was different than other fights. He was defending himself smartly. He was in the fight. He wasn't knocked out. Meeks kind of, you know, he got in position, like the possible position. Let me survive. But he wasn't in danger. Great refereeing right now. And we saw Mylon Ayers go over there and just kind of watch Jaquan Meeks for a second to see how damaged he may have been. Is this guy all right? Looked like he watched him for a second. It was okay with him continuing the fight. Some of the highlights from our first round. Great right hands out of Jaquan Meeks in a few of the exchanges. Here's some of the knees that we saw him land on Guzman, which might have been the biggest strikes that he landed in that matchup. Oh, it was a knee to the head there that dropped him. See, there's not a ton of quote-unquote intelligent, intelligent defense here. He's got his hand up. That doesn't necessarily always equate, but he exploded back up to his feet before Mylon Ayers had to step in. I'm not mad at that continuing that. Yeah, the blows that he was throwing were all getting blocked. So good work by the referee. Go to round two. Mix taking on Guzman. Flyweight fight. 
we now see uh, Miguel Guzman coming out in orthodox. Oh, he switched back to southpaw. I expect to see another big body hit out of Guzman. Ooh, nice short. Left oh. that connects. Meeks responding with four blows. And the way Meeks stepped in and continued his barrage of attacks. That's what I meant when I said I'd like to see him follow up. There he did it. We saw him have a whoa, nice elbow by Guzman. Yeah, Guzman has to use those elbows. I was asking for him in round one. Ooh. And the knee. Looks like Guzman got upset that he took some blows. Yeah, yeah. Guzman did a great job of changing levels on his strikes. Attack in the head, throw knees to the body, up back to elbows to the head. Oh, good spin out of there by Meeks. Yeah, Meeks escapes and throws some bombs back in his own. I am loving the way these guys keep coming back at each other. Oh! Yeah, these are flyweights, but it's looking like a middleweight fight. These guys are, are delivering blows, standing two for two, not moving around much. What a fight. Who's these, these body kicks are really going to start adding up. I'm surprised that Jaquan Reese has been able to take them so without really showing a ton of damage because, man, they are brutal to take. Them. See, he's Ooh. slowing down. This is what I meant by the body shots. He should go to the body right now. The body's out to stand up, separate, blast it into the body. I, I potentially see this might be stopped here. There you go. That's the You gotta go to the body and he's gonna stop it. And Miguel Guzman with the victory. Through his mouthpiece, nearly had he gone through the gate, he would have hit Blake in the face. Miguel Guzman, pro debut, is victorious. And wins TKO by body shots. Fantastic pro debut by Miguel Guzman. I talked about those body kicks and knees and so forth adding up. And that's why we saw Jaquan Meeks crumble there at the end. It wasn't the big strike that laid him out. He just taken enough damage to the body that he crumpled down and, and accepted the loss, which, again, I say this, if you've never been hit in the body by a professional fighter, you just can't appreciate it. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from round two. Well, this is where it ends, but he was already breathing hard, so I was just saying his, his body's hurt. Just go to the body. There he does, and Meeks instantly starts making the noises that will get the referee to stop it. And it was also beautiful by Miguel Guzman. Watch, he switches to the elbows of the body here. Few elbows. Meeks starts to protect his body with his left Boom. arm. Boom. Opens the head up. Guzman switches to Pamber strikes on the head. Very high level changing of targets in the heat of the moment, which is and for his pro debut, it's which is the say, which is extremely high level. And if we re repeat it before he knocked him down, he went soft to the head a couple of times and hard to the body. It was kind of like measuring him out, body, 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 and he dropped him down. Beautiful work by him. Beautiful work by Blake saying the importance of the body. Mentioned it in early in round one, and that's how it finished it. Let's go to Tyson Johnson with our official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, it's one minute, 28 seconds into round number two. Your winner by Blake TKO, Miguel Guzman. Guzman with the victory. Bonnie Jill Laughlin with the interview. Michael Guzman, you were landing all those body shots. When do you knew that was working for you? Uh, my coach told me. I don't know. I, I didn't see it. I thought I heard him with a knee earlier, so I was trying to go for the head. But my coach told me hit on the body and drop it. How much was the trainers helping you? I heard them coaching throughout that whole fight. Everything, everything they said I did. I, maybe every now and then I would go you know, off the cuff, but yeah, he said cut him off the cage a lot, and it worked. That's why I finished the second round. I was trying to go first round finish, but I ended up being second. Now your stock's on the rise. What's next for Michael Guzman? Well, I'm trying to fight maybe late January after my birthday. You know, celebrate my birthday and, and get to fight. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm trying to take a look. I, this is two months, you know, a fight camp I had. I'm, I want a little break. <laughs> Congratulations. Michael Guzman, your winner. <laughs> Love the personality. Miguel Guzman with the victory. Coming up next, Ethan Ewing taking on Ulysses Molina. But here's a little taste of the great personalities that you're going to see inside the cage. San Francisco, California. I train at Dragon House in San Francisco and also at Rufus Sport in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. My name is Ethan Ewing. I currently don't have a nickname yet, and I train out at the Dan Training Center in Yorba Linda. To be honest, I don't know too much about him. Uh, I know he's a solid guy. He's two and two. Lost his first two fights as a professional. He's rallied off two in a row. I like to look intensively into my opponents and really get a look for everything they do. I know I'm going to finish him. I for sure know I'm, I'm going to go for the finish. Yeah, my prediction is that I finish this guy. Um, if it goes to the ground, I, I'll take a submission or I'll take a ground and pound TKO. If it stays standing, then I'll 
I'll, I'll box them, I'll, I'll land a big shot, and I'll let the rest work itself out. We keep growing here in Lights Out Extreme Fighting with NBA champion with the Warriors in 2018, Jordan Bell. I'm going to give you a microphone. You're part of the Lights Out family. We have Sean Merriman, Blake Bulletproof Troop. Jordan, tell us about this night and what you're seeing here in Lights Out Extreme Fighting. Oh, it's been amazing, man. Um, I know it's amateurs, but you're seeing some really good uh, fighting styles out there. Uh, we got a couple finishes, but uh, overall, it's just a really good fight going on. Yeah, the pro fights are coming up now. We saw the last one, and five more to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What would it take for Sean Merriman to get NBA champion <laughs> Jordan Bell inside of the cage? I've seen videos yeah. of you fighting with yeah, Sean. Yeah, uh, yeah like, like, uh, I love the sport uh, from a distance, um, <laughs> but I'm still playing. But um, like I said, I've been in the gym working on stuff. Him with uh, Sean, AJ McKee, and them. Um, I definitely want to get in there at some point. At what level that is, I don't know, but I, I definitely love the sport, and I think when I'm done playing basketball, it's something I definitely want to like really give my all to and put my focus on. <laughs> Sean, how good is he inside the cage with a fist? Look, look, I, I've been saying this all the time, man. These guys, I'm telling you, if they, if they start training a little bit early, he shocked me. We got there, we started working. I said, hold on, you playing the NBA, man. It, you got to calm down. But I'm telling you, man, we, we talk a lot about, you know, these former athletes transitioning into their sport, and it'll happen more and more down the line. But, man, you take somebody like this as a physical freak, getting in this cage, learning this, getting some work in, who knows what can happen. Yeah, but Jordan will tell you, hey, I got paid millions in the NBA, Sean. You got to show me the money, <laughs> yeah, baby. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I got, we got to put him on there. Talk about no going to him right now. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan, you're pretty good with the microphone. Yes, so you, you're not going to take my job, too. Nah, you know? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> Maybe after the fight. Maybe after the fighting career. What are we going to see this season from Jordan Bell? Huh? What, what can we expect from you this season? Oh, uh, just to be dominant. Um, I feel like I'm in my, my greatest form as far as basketball-wise. So uh, I'm going to try to just put together a full season and see what we can do with that. NBA champion Jordan Bell here part watching Lights Out Extreme Fighting. He trains with Sean Merriman. Sean, you're building a monster, baby. Let's go to Tyson Johnson, our cage announcer, as we hang out here in the Lights Out crew. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome to the Lights Out cage, Ulysses Molina. Hey, Bobby, grab a picture Yeah. Entering first, Ulises Molina.
Ulysses Molina coming out looking like he is ready to scrap. Said that he is coming out to finish his opponent in this fight. He says he's going to finish it anywhere that he wants to finish it. And he is fighting a very tough opponent who also thinks he's going to get the finish. Man, what a night so far, Blake. This one, Ulises Molina taking on Ethan Ewing. 135-pound fight. Let's go to the red corner. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Lights Out Cage, Ethan Ewing. So Ethan Ewing is another guy that trains with the Badger crew, which is Jacob Rosales' team. And a bunch of these guys are killers. We saw his teammate, Andrew Carv Carvajal, earlier come out and make his opponent leave the building in a stretcher or on a stretcher inside of an ambulance. So these, he has a fantastic training partner to prepare for tonight's matchup, and he has fantastic teammates that are killers. And when they say iron sharpens iron, so you're the only one person gets inside the cage, but your teammates help shape who that person who gets inside the cage. And he has a fantastic team behind him. Both these fighters coming off of wins. Ewing won his last two fights. Molina, he won his last one. So both wanting to continue that winning streak. The last loss by Ewing was via heel hook. So a tough way to go, but you make a mistake in this, this game, it can end that quick. Ooh, hard smacks. Blake, are you the type that you like getting hit before your fights? Not particularly, um, but I end up getting hit a lot in my fights, so. <laughs> they call me bulletproof because I walk through damage. <laughs> Those are pretty hard blows right there. You know, some fighters like that, and it, it gets them in the zone. Where I think a handful of fighters, they need to realize they're in a fight. They need to get hit once or twice to really begin fighting. My good friend, uh, rest in peace, Stephen Bonner was one of those guys. We had to hit him in the face a few times before he was really in the fight. And so, Ethan Ewing, a couple slaps from his coach, might put him in the zone to get inside the Lights Out Street fighting cage to put away Ulysses Molina. Molina fighting out of San Francisco. His last fight, he won by rear naked choke in round two. Tell the tape, any numbers jump out of you, please. Even Ewing, 25, Ulysses Molina, 28, very close, 5'8", five, 5'6", five, very similar in height. The big difference, we see a 2-2 two two record on Ethan Ewing and a 4-3 and three record with Ulysses Molina, who has significantly more experience than Ethan Ewing in, inside of the cage. Gentlemen, this bout will be three five-minute rounds in the Bantamweight division. And it is the first, putting out of the blue corner. This fight stands five feet, six inches tall. He went in at 136 pounds. He has a mixed martial arts record of four wins and three defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ulysses Molina. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner stands five feet, eight inches tall. He weighed in at 135 pounds. He has a mixed martial arts record of two wins and two defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ethan Ewing. Your referee for this battle will be Rafael Davis. Referees Rafael Davis. Molina in the blue. Going in the red. I don't think they're going to be touching hands here either. Intense by Ewing and Molina early on. Lights out, extreme fighting. 11. Fights on the way. This is doing a great job of trying to close the distance here. Ooh. Great kick there by Molina, who's definitely trying to keep this fight at range. Looks like Ethan Ewing is trying to get in. Ooh, threw some powerful strikes there. Yeah, I like the, the up and balance by Ewing, but he seems steady when he's time to throw punch. Perfect. Great positioning, great body balance with the rhythm, but then getting solid to deliver those blows. That's a beautiful low leg kick. That was sharp. Ethan Ewing is thrown with some precision and some power. Yeah. Like everything I've seen from Ewing. Good little 
head bump to avoid that right. Nice kick by Mung Lee to finally land. But Ewing is like a pit bull. He's just hounding him down. And he's walking him down. He's oh. cutting off the ring, keeping Molina's back against the cage. He's not following him. He's cutting him off. Ooh, that was a big leg kick there. But, uh, was... And all his punches and kicks are shaking Molina. Even when they get blocked, they're causing damage. Yeah, he has a great jab, too. You see him sticking there. Oh, oh great he jab. He him with that jab. Yeah, just... He plans so well that every shot he throws has power behind him, even that jab. There it goes again. Oh, we might unload on this guy and finish this fight. Oh, I think Molina. Looks like Molina. Yeah, Molina is shaking. Man, those kicks, too. Even Ewing is chopping that front leg of Ulysses Molina. Yeah, he's looking bigger as the fight goes on, and Molina is starting to shrink down. Let's see how Molina responds. But that's twice. He's like reaching back because his balance is there. And he got caught again to the body. And beautiful. Even Ewing there. Lands a great shot to the head. Whoa, and then drops down the bottom and attacks the body next. Oh, that side kick hurt. Molina didn't sell it much, but you definitely know that it did damage. Ulysses, or even Ely's doing a fantastic job of mixing up strikes now, whether it's his hands or his feet, kicking high, kicking medium, kicking low, utilizing a variety of attacks at a variety of different levels. You just see Molina throwing a single strike back in time. It's a bantamweight fight, but Ewing looking like middleweight with the power behind these punches. Not just the power behind his punches, but he's putting himself in fantastic position to land and then not get landed on. His footwork is awesome. His footwork, his ring positioning, and the angle that he's getting on U Ulysses Molina. But Molina seems like he's being overwhelmed. And Molina doesn't know what to do, and whatever Ewing is doing is working. Yeah, a lot of faith in the oh. changing out of, out of Ulysses e, or uh, out of Ewing. E yeah, the body shots are working. There are one, two, three combinations to the body. Another right that connects. And Molina keeps wasting time taking the hair out of his face. Fighters, please, either cut your hair or put it in a braid because he, it's causing him damage. I think another thing about long hair is when you get hit, you can see the shock waves through the hair. Right. It makes strikes look significantly more damaging. Boom, again. That connects. Great patience out of Ethan Ewing, too. He's picking his shots, getting himself in good position, pressuring Molina, and then picking big shots. There you see Molina again. He keeps combing the hair out of his face, and then he's eating punches after. He's just getting walked around the cage. One thing that's of note is Molina continually escapes to his left, which is the power side. Whoa! Just threw him down. Ewing. Big man muscles. I'd like to see him just back up and have him pick it up. Well, he's completely dominating the stand-up fight. Yeah, no need to fall into any. And it's obviously Molina wants to bring this to the mat because standing, he's getting outworked. I expect to see Molina go down in the next three seconds. Another. That was a big shot. I think if he goes to the body again, he might have him. Every time he's leaving the body open, Uh, Ethan Ewing turns up the temperature and will get a first round finish on potentially here. I think if a big barrage of strikes against the cage could potentially end this fight for Ethan Ewing. The only credit I can give Molina is he's taken some punches, well, but he hasn't done much more. Yeah, the thing about fighting though, you don't want to be known as being tough because that means you get hit a lot. Yeah. Trust me, I know from personal experience. Oh, no, if you're eating punches and delivering, then it's okay, but he's just been eating punches. Right there, the body's open. Boom, boom, one, two. Yeah, those are two big shots to the body. Those are open all day. He covers his face. And that's the end of the first round. Ewing, that was about as perfect a round without finishing a fight as you can have. Yeah, um, I could even potentially see that being a 10 8 round with how dominantly one side of the offense was. We saw maybe seven or eight attacks thrown by Molina. And it's not bashing him. I think it puts over Ethan Ewing's ability to put himself in good position. Let's take a look at some of the highlights here. That was the jab that we saw early on that looked like it wobbled Molina a little bit. And a jab is typically more of a probing weapon. Ooh, and a beautiful right hand. You see Ethan Ewing keeping his hands high and throwing with power. Boom. And some of the, the rare offense we see 
Ulysses Molina throw out, getting countered by Ethan Ewing. A very, very dominant first round for Ethan Ewing. Ewing has a just a two and two record, but who did he fight that beat him? <laughs> because he's looking impressive here so far. But let's see if Molina can flip it. And again, in this sport, one mistake, they can cost you a fight. Again, Ewing lost via heel hook. So maybe Molina's strategy is let's see if we can take this fight to the ground. Knees by Ewing. He wants to end it in now. Yeah, any time that Ewing comes in and throws something really powerful, it almost seems to wobble the entire base of Ulysses Molina. Molina constantly reaching back to see where the cage is. I think Ewing feels so comfortable now. He's like, I'm not going to take any unnecessary chances. He's just waiting for the moment to finish. Molina's doing a good job of protecting his head, but defense. Yeah, defense wins a little bit, but you don't want to always be fighting a defensive fight. And he has been, in my opinion, on a very difficult, oh, beautiful kick. Yeah, those kicks are landing. Molina, in the first was attempting to but now he's just basically a punching bag for Ewing. Another hard kick. And Molina has got to start throwing some bombs back. He's got a couple takedown attempts and been stuffed by Ethan Ewing. He needs to start. Uh, setting up some offensive attacks besides a one punch and again beautiful takedown defense by Ethan Ewing but even his one punch attempts don't have any power behind it so basically Molina is just he keeps doing this he's just going to keep receiving punishment cool. beautiful oh, power shots body. by Ethan Ewing who's really choosing his strikes I think here oh. oh yeah that was a beautiful left hook to Look for it again. Molina's tough. It's a shot. That left hook just now. And I saw uh, Ethan Ewing's corner telling you about that left hook between rounds, and he just landed it big time. Oh, beautiful shot. Oh, he might, he might be able to finish this. So what he has here is a Darius jump right, right on his bed under. And he's able to exactly lay you as going to leave it down like this. Just flip over. Exactly. Now he's going to drop his pressure down. And what this does is it closes the arteries on both sides of the neck. One's blocked by Ulysses' shoulder, and the other's blocked by Ethan. And there's a tap, tap, tap with a Darius choke. Ethan Ewing with a dominant, dominant performance. Dominating with punching, dominating with low, powerful kicks, and then he finished it with a choke. Another, Impressive by Ethan Ewing. Another fantastic win for Badger Crew here at Lights Out Extreme Fighting 11. And you can see Ethan Ewing sitting up on the side of the cage with the Badger Crew flag. You know the boys at the den are probably feeling pretty good right now going 2-0 tonight here at Lights Out Extreme Fighting 11. Molina completely outclassed in this one. He was never able to really even get himself started on stuff because of the pressure, constant pressure and attacks of uh, Ethan Ewing. Let's take a look at the shot. That, should we see the shot come in here? And you can see Ethan Ewing slide that right on through, which is under the armpit, connecting, closing his hands behind the head. Ended up getting uh, Ulysses Molina on his side here and then drops all his weight down on that shoulder. That shoulder presses into the neck, and on the opposite side is the Ooh. forearm, closing the choke and securing the tap for a second round submission win. Ethan Ewing. Ewing now with three wins as a professional. Ladies and gentlemen, after two minutes, 15 seconds into round number two, your winner by way of tap out, Ethan Ewing. Bonnie Jail, what dinner? Constant pressure on him from the beginning, but backing him up. Was that the plan for with your trainer from the beginning? Oh yeah. Uh, do a lot of game study, you know, watch his fights, and uh, I know he was very patient, and I know I'm a forward fighter, so I knew my face and my jobs were gonna open up right away. So yes. You have a lot of swagger, but at any time are you worried about your opponent? Worried about what? About your opponent. Um, you know, of course, this is a, a very serious game, this is a very deadly game. You know, life and death sometimes, so of course. Of course, I was prepared, but I'm very confident at the same time. All right, congratulations. Here's your winner, Ethan Ewing.
Ewing with the victory. Thank you, Bonnie Jill Laughlin. We continue the fight. Keep getting better. And now to give you another sneak peek at the preview of the great personalities that you're going to see on Lights Out Extreme Fighting 11. My name is Elias Schalweiser. I'm fighting uh, out of the White House, originally from Armenia. Uh, my name is Jenny Crambo. I train at Verdun Training Center in Kings MMA. Uh, I'm from Switzerland and Brazil. Uh, my strength uh, out of uh, from my opponent is uh, like everything, you know, like my cardio, my, my striking, my pressure, my wrestling, everything, you know. Uh, I started training with uh, Jiu Jitsu when I was 14 years old. For me, it doesn't matter. Like, uh, I training, I think, like one of the top gyms in uh, Jiu Jitsu, Gracie Barra, and my, my partner's like. Edwin Najmi, like Armand Sarukian, you know, like a lot of good guys who like much better. They, some guys have black belts, but that's like <laughs> no black belt, you know. So we see. Yannick versus Kraken Bull taking on Shaq Basayan is next. Lights out, Extreme Fighting 11. We'll be back. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome to the Lights Out Cage, Elvis Sharpazian. Elvis Sharpazian entering first. He's a wrestler from Glendale. He tells you what he wants to do. He wants to wrestle you to the ground and pound you. Talk to me about Elvis. You know, Elvis and I have actually trained together at Black House. He has fantastic wrestling and he is very well-rounded. I'm actually really excited for this fight because these are two studs. This could almost be a main event fight on a lot of other cards. He's going to take on Yannick Krakenbull. He's from Switzerland, but he's got Brazilian parents. So it's going to be jiu-jitsu taking on a wrestler with lots of punching and kicking thrown in. This is Lights Out Extreme Fighting 11. This one's going to be a good one. Fight at 145 pounds. And so like he said, he's Armenian, born in Armenia, and the Armenians are deep here in Los Angeles, and they are extremely good. Ronda Rousey comes from the Armenian team here in Los Angeles, as well as a variety of uh, Edmund Shabazian is another Armenian doing big things in the UFC. So he comes from fighting is in this guy's blood, and they are some of the best fighters in the world, the Armenians here in Los Angeles. So this kid is a killer. What Elvis needs to know is his two losses by decision. Lots of times wrestlers, they don't get style points. So you gotta win points also sometimes for these fights. So Elvis needs to know to not let this go to a decision if you haven't landed enough blows as well. 
I don't expect this fight to go to decision. I think that this is going to be an extremely high-level mixed martial arts competition between Elvis and Yannick. Yeah, and Yannick, he trains out of King's MMA, trains with Felipe Verdum, brother of Fabricio Verdum. Shout out to Fabricio Verdum. And also Rafael Cordero, the head of King's MMA. Love the guys over there. Done several interview stories with King's MMA, and they produce some amazing talents. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Lights Out Cage, Yannick Krosenbaum. Yannick Krakenbull coming in. I told you he trains out of Kings MMA. What can you tell me about this fighter, Blake? He is a very high-level jiu-jitsu practitioner. Got his black belt Brazilian jiu-jitsu at 21 years old. And he believes that he'll be able to submit Elvis tonight in their matchup. Like you said, he trains out of Kings MMA, which is the head coach, Rafael Cordero. Interesting background. Elvis trains at Black House MMA. Rafael Cordero also used to be a coach there. He left and has started Kings MMA, so there's somewhat of a friendly rivalry between Black House and Kings MMA. I fought a Kings guy, I was a Black House guy, I fought a Kings guy before, and now we see another Black House fighter matched up against a Kings MMA fighter. So there's more than just these two guys going to war. There's a little, like I said, friendly rivalry between gyms. Yeah, and, and the gyms have their fighters here cheering them on. The other gym has their fighters here cheering them on. Something tells me November 18th, Lights Out Extreme Fighting 12, some of the people in attendance here will be inside the cage fighting as well. Would not surprise me. And, and like we said, two of the top-rated gyms, not just in Southern California, but the world. Both gyms have uh, produced world champions of UFC. So, like, I'm talking top-level competition. These are some of the best of the best. By the way, fight 145 pounds. Yeah, both of these guys are in tremendous shape. Not an ounce of fat on either of their bodies. Just like us, Blake. Just like us. Just in tremendous shape. You know, what can we do? Hey, some people are built for comfort. Some people are built for speed. Let's go to the tail of the tape for this fight. Five-year difference for Yannick. Five-year younger. Two-inch reach advantage in height. Elvis Sakbasayan, though. He's like... I'm okay when the fight gets to the mat. Let's go to Tyson. This next bout will be three five minute rounds in the featherweight division. And it is the first fighting out of the blue corner. This fight stands five feet eight inches tall. He went in at 145 pounds. He has a mixed martial arts record of one win and two defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Elvis Shakazian. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner stands five feet, 10 inches tall. He went in at 145 pounds. He has a mixed martial arts record of one win and one defeat. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Yannick Cronenborg. Your referee for this bout will be Milan Ez. Total difference in styles out of both guys. The poker face by Elvis, and then the athletic hopping around, getting ready by Yannick. Ooh, Elvis is starting to move now. Bell's about to ring, and these boys are about to get it on. Yannick in the red corner. Elvis in the blue corner. Ready to fight? Ready to fight? And the fight gets underway. The respect of touching gloves. Yannick, Brazilian parents, but he was born in Switzerland. He receives a kick. From Elvis, Shaka Sayana. Yeah, Elvis comes out and takes the center of the ring. Faints a couple things and then lands a nice kick. And then you see Yannick immediately throw back a straight kick to the body. Both Ooh. guys fainting a little bit in the middle of the ring, too. Nice front kick by Yannick to preserve that distance using that height advantage. Two inches taller than Elvis. Yeah, not only two inches taller, but he looks like he has significantly longer arms, which I didn't see a reach for arms or legs. His limbs look longer. Not only is he taller, he seems significantly Ooh. longer. Nice body kick there. Didn't get to check it at all. That one flush up against the ribs. So we've seen Elvis throw a couple leg kicks now. Now you really see him fake that rear kick. He fainted the rear kick, and then he did an inside pressing kick, which is not super common in mixed martial arts. 
not, now starting to try and establish that jab. I would like to see him throw out more of those jabs. He's a very long fighter. He should be utilizing his long. Whoa! Elvis. Elvis kind of taunted him, like, what's up? I just kicked you in the head. Again, it didn't land flush, but you cannot take a whole lot of those to the arm. You get kicked in the arm, it's not blocked. It's just absorbed Ooh. in a better spot. And that one, look at the welt instantly on the calf of Yannick. Power in the kicks by Elvis. He yeah, doesn't have it on his blue suede shoes, but he's got that Russian power. Oh! Whoa. Swinging for the fences. Bad intentions with that overhand. I'd like to see Elvis start just jabbing out and blasting more of those leg kicks. That leg kick, like you said, has left a big welt on the lead left uh, low leg of Yannick. Man, Yannick, he's 5'10", but to make featherweight, you're cutting a lot of weight. There's not much weight left in the body, and those legs are eating. He's got three shots. I'd keep chopping that down. So would I. But, and so when you kick the low leg, it's significantly harder to block. And not only that, but if you can hit just below the outside of the leg, you can hit what's called the peroneal nerve. And what that does, it, it um, makes it hard to do different it, it, it prevents the nerve from being able to innervate the foot muscles. So you can't really stand up. Yeah, and the knee starts being a little bit faulty, and you're seeing it well. Look at the, the left knee on Yannick already starting to to grow a little bit on the on the outside. Yeah, you can see clear shin marks across that. Whoa! Across the left leg of Yannick. There goes your oh, right right a hand. nice right hand by Elvis. So far winning the round, Elvis. Yeah, he weighed that earlier and it missed. It looked like it didn't land flush that time, but that overhand right. Oh, there it is again. And that was from north-south, that overhand right. That was completely over. You know, that's something Chuck Liddell would do a lot. He would throw, he'd throw it almost over the top where it chopped down. It's going to hit something. <laughs> now going for the takedown. Elvis showing his complete game. We mentioned he's a wrestler out of Glendale. Yeah, I'm nice. And he takes him down. Nice. Finished the double leg with an inside trip. Now Yannick has his right arm kind of tied up. I'd like to see Elvis pick Yannick up and slide him towards the cage and jam his head into the cage. That'll allow him to land better strikes, potentially posturing up, and it'll shut down a lot of the jiu-jitsu offense that Yannick can do from the bottom position. Still 90 seconds to go in just the first round of three. Elvis doing as he pleases. Help out. Yannick here. What can he do to get back on his feet, or is he comfortable? On his I think Yannick wants to be here. I think he has the right arm where he has some control over it. If he's able to continue to climb his legs, he might be able to set up a triangle. Which, if he's able to get uh, Elvis's left arm pushed back, his right arm's trapped. Elvis is stuck in this position because of the overhook that Yannick has. If, he can, if Yannick can bring his left leg over high, his arm's free now. Oh, Elvis is dominant on top. So here he can get a straight arm bar. You see him attack, ooh, and, and Elvis is able to get his arm back. I'd like to see Elvis lift him up and push him in. See how now he's starting to put his head into the cage? That's what's going to shut down a lot of Yannick's offense and then also allow him to land strikes. When Yannick's head's against the cage, he can't move it. When you can't move it, it's that much easier to hit and that much harder to start implementing jiu-jitsu offense from the bottom position. Still 30 seconds to go. Elvis trying to finish in the first round. Not really delivering clean blows, but he dominated the first round. In all eyes. Yeah, definitely have him winning this first round. Yannick is, is not... Oh, is, he's, he's offensive from the bottom, but he has not really been able to implement a whole lot of offense. But if he can isolate that right arm that he has overhook to trap, you can see right here, that's what he's looking to do with his jiu-jitsu. He's either going to come up and attack that arm or get the leg around the head for a triangle jump. Dominant by Elvis. Elvis has got to be feeling good after being in Yannick's guard for that long and not having any crazy submission attempts. I would be feeling a lot better being him coming out of that first round. Let's take a look at some of the highlights. Here we saw Elvis get that double leg, turned into an inside trip. That's how he got top position over Yannick, which was about the last two minutes of the first round. You mentioned that early that Yannick did a front kick, trying to keep that distance. But then the rest of the fight, he had Elvis up on his face. We need to see Yannick use that jab, use those front kicks, try to, try to use that distance. 
because we didn't see it at all. He looked smaller. <laughs> he looked like the smaller fighter in this one. You are absolutely right. He has a big advantage in his leg, and he needs to utilize that because when they're close together, your leg doesn't help you. But if you're at range and you can fight a smart long-range fight, it absolutely pays dividends to be able to do that. I'd like to see Yannick do a better job of utilizing his length in the strike. Round two. Yannick, Kraken. In the red, Elvis. Shak Basayan. In the blue corner with the beard. Elvis with the beard and Yannick with the Lights out extreme fighting 11. Good first round by Elvis. Let's see if Yannick can respond. Yannick came out with the jab. I'd like to see him utilize more of these straight long range attacks. Potentially even a right uh, straight kick to the bottom. Elvis got away from those kicks to the left leg of Yannick, which will cause some damage. He returns to that. I'd like to see open. him throw it here. Hey, he leaves it right there. I mean, the legs is. The thing is, that low leg kick is so hard to block. You're landing on an outs. Oh! Yannick! Yannick throwing a big head kick. Elvis able to catch him on the slip and land in top position. We see them now in half guard. But again, that was a little risk reward. Didn't pay off for Yannick because he missed the kick and now he's in a bad position here. You know, I think he's relatively comfortable. You think he, he down wants to jiu I think he can get back to full guard if he wants, but the thing about being in half guard, it's a lot easier to sweep your opponent. When you're in full guard, you have more submission possibilities. Oh, oh, so he gets a heel hook here. And the last loss by Elvis was a heel hook. Yannick, Brazilian roots, Brazilian parents, Verdum in his corner. But you know they know jiu-jitsu. Oh, beautiful scramble by Elvis. Let's see if he gets back up. Yes, wow. So that's what I was saying with being in the bottom position there in half guard. You have more sweep possibilities. Yannick went for a sweep, ended up keeping the leg and almost getting a leg lock submission, coming dangerously close to controlling that leg on Elvis. Yeah, he began jiu-jitsu at 14, and he said his dream growing up was in Switzerland was to fight in the UFC. Well, he's now fighting in lights out. See what he can do here, but he's got Elvis on his back. You know, uh, Yannick just tried to roll through for a leg lock there. Elvis did a fantastic job of dropping weight on him and sitting oh. down. Yannick again goes for almost gets a sweep. Let's see if he's able to pull a triangle out right here. You can see the right leg is being, if he, oh, Elvis gets his left arm back in. Very smart. The long legs of Yannick probably has an incredible triangle. On top of being a black belt, having long limbs really helps to have a dangerous card for throwing up submission attempts. I'd like to see him exactly start climbing his legs. Almost like a ladder. You'll see him chop one ankle in, chop the other one. Where right now it's by his butt. Now he tries to climb. Now it's on his low back. I'd like to see him climb even higher to the mid back, upper back. Then you can start utilizing more of your body against less of your opponents. Trying to get that arm bar. Trying to work those legs up, but too it's, much power by Elvis. And Elvis is doing a fantastic job of keeping good head position, and he's got him stuck against the cage, which really reduces your mobility in the bottom position, which then in turn decreases your ability to defend yourself or implement offense from the bottom. Great elbows as well. If you're watching us on Fubo and you missed any of this, you can always look up Lights Out Extreme Fighting on Fubo and you can see past events and this event. You can also set it to record future Lights Out Extreme Fighting events as well. Elvis is doing a fantastic job of just kind of grinding on the audio here. He's got forearm chokes. You can see him kind of covering them out. Not necessarily doing a ton of damage, but grinding on it and slowly taking down his health bar and his conditioning. Still 90 seconds to go in round two. This looks like replay of round one. Elvis in position. Yannick trying to be offensive with the jiu-jitsu, just nothing there. So he had the guard closed for a long time. Right there, we just saw him open it up and put in a right butterfly hook. I'd like to see him open up his guard and start being more offensive from the bottom. When his legs are closed like this, you don't have a whole lot that you can do. When they're open, you can start shifting your hips around, hitting legs under for sweeps. I'd like to see him open it because he cannot continue to stay on the bottom position. You don't win fights from the bottom. Milan Air stands the fighters up because of a lack of action, which I'm not necessarily mad at. Oh, Yannick responding with a knee. Punches by Yannick. Now we got a fight. Elvis got caught, but now he falls on again. That's twice that time. Elvis falls. We got ourselves a car burger right now. Hook, knees, responding Yannick. Another hook for the boss. Job of glasses, some big knees, and a very tired looking Elvis. Elvis is 
done it a lot to hold Yannick down and get takedown attempts. And again, if you're the judge, one fighter dominated four minutes, the other one the final one minute. The judges tend to sometimes go to the one who closed it out. Could be trouble for Elvis if Yannick steals this round. Especially if he runs out of gas this round. It does not have a whole lot left in output for round three. What I mentioned also, Elvis is two losses by decision. Lots of times you lay on top of someone as a wrestler and you don't get the points for the round. That might have happened here. I see how Yannick could have won this round. Who would you give this round to, Blake? You know, that's a tough one. I believe that I would probably give it to Elvis. I might have biased eyes because he's trained to Black House and I have a personal relationship with him. But I think the ground control time that he had was, um, but then again, this submission attempt that we saw, this was the closest to the fight potentially being ended. So after seeing this replay right here, this right here, would, in my opinion, would have won the round for Yannick. And the, and the knees, and he finished up with some nice strikes. Again, I'm, I'm not saying he definitely won the round. But I can see how a judge can easily give it these... to Yannick. Yeah, what a good fight we have here. We still have another round. We are live on camera. Blake Bulletproof, Proof by and Pablo Alcina. Sean Merriman, the founder, is right to my left as well. We're seeing a great fight. Round three, though, I have it 1-1. I'm thinking the judges saw it how I saw it, especially from that other fight that we saw that some way they gave it to somebody else. So it's going to be interesting to see if Elvis, knowing he had two losses by decision, comes out a bit more aggressive, and also to see what Yannick does, thinking that maybe he lost the first two rounds. Yeah, the crowd here in Southern California cannot wait for round three, and neither can I, Pablo. These boys have been scrapping, and I expect them to continue it in the third round. Here's round three. Yannick. Yannick definitely right looks like he has more energy right now, which may help him big time if this fight continues through the full five minutes. Elvis with the beard out of the blue corner. A wrestler looking for his third pro victory. I'm surprised we haven't seen Elvis chopping that look that he played. Did a lot of damage to it in the first round. And it's almost like he just bailed on the on a very effective there. Oh, there was one, but he didn't chop it as much. Do you think maybe he hurt his foot though? Because lots of times you hurt your foot, so you don't want to throw it. That's the only reason why I'm thinking he's not throwing that kick. It was so it was working great. And now Yannick has his legs again. Potentially Yannick's been doing a fantastic job with that step in the he did his great knees towards the end of the second round. And he came out through a big step in the air. Here's another time where I believe Yannick is going to end a big rear knee at some point in the next minute. Yeah, the look on Yannick's eyes have changed from round one and two. He's feeling better. Elvis has to try to take his fight back to the ground, try to get where he's comfortable. Yeah, I definitely agree with being one and one going into the third round, but the big difference is significant momentum in Yannick's favor. And I think that you can see it in this face where now he's the one putting the pressure on Elvis. Where Elvis was coming forward a lot. Oh, there's that knee. I told you, I, I expect a big knee, a big rear knee coming out of Yannick very soon. This could be big right here if Elvis is able to secure the take back in the top position. Good work by Elvis. Although Elvis being more tired, maybe it opens up Yannick. Get him on one of those submissions. Elvis has been doing a fantastic job of putting Yannick's head into the cage, which, like I've been saying throughout the fight, makes it very difficult for the fighter that is on bottom to defend himself by moving his head or by implementing uh, offensive jiu-jitsu from the bottom position. As a fighter, would you be open to open scoring in MMA where the fighters can see the score? I believe that it should be open scoring. I think that it's doing the sport a disservice by not having a scoreboard. Guys should know if they're winning fights or losing fights. Particularly because fight scoring is subjective. There's not a, you get two points for a basket, the score at the end is whatever the score is. That's not how it works in mixed martial arts. It's your opinion of who won the, won the round based on certain criteria. Right. The argument, the counter argument is if a fighter knows he's already won two rounds, he'll just run around the last round. And I, I get that argument as well. I mean, what happens in football when a team's ahead? Well, they, you know, they they down the ball. Like, it's it's playing the game of the sport. And that already happens anywhere where guys think they're ahead and cruise control through the rest of the fight. I think it should be open scoring, and then it should be more 10-8 rounds. If a fighter just runs the whole time, and it's a 10-8 round. Something something to that effect, you know, to to limit a guy won the first two rounds and then just runs around for five minutes, right? So about a minute of top pressure by uh, Elvis, and Violet stands them both up. Elvis looks tired. I expect to see another step in the out of the right here. Oh, Elvis. 
this is a quick, easy takedown with very little energy expenditure. And we have about a minute and a half left on the clock. You know, he's, oh, see how high his legs are now? Oh, they kind of sunk down. But the higher you can climb your legs on a guy's body, but he has the open guard now, which is going to open up a lot more submission possibilities like this arm bar, maybe. Ooh, at least potentially transition up to the top or at least out from on the bottom. But Elvis rides him with his fantastic wrestling. Stays on top of Yannick and tries to land more ground and pound. Yannick recovers guard. He's got to open those legs up. In my opinion, he needs to start doing something drastic right now if he wants to win this round. He spent nearly three minutes, maybe two and a half minutes in the bottom position. Not a lot's happened, but he's being controlled. Yeah, and unlike the first round where Yannick was able to have a minute to steal the round, I don't think this has the time here to do it. He's going to need to go for a submission. And Elvis is spending everything he has to take. He looks exhausted, but he's still throwing big shots from on top and trying to, to win this fight. He's not just cruise controlling it. He is trying to put in the effort to win the fight. Yeah, I think, again, those two losses by decision, trying to be a little bit more aggressive here at the end. Oh, well, they did try and... Right there, Yannick was going for a triangle attempt. Uh, but see how when his legs are open, he has significantly more options of, of attack. See, legs open up. Final Push. 20 seconds. Oh, sweep. Let's see if he's able to... Very close to getting a sweep there on Elvis, but there's not a whole lot of time left on the clock. Yeah, now Yannick needed this fight on the feet a bit more. And Elvis dominating with the wrestling rounds one and three and finishing it with some hammer blows. Quick break and we'll be back with more. Fubo has over 200 channels of live TV, sports, and news for half the cost of cable. To celebrate Lights Out Extreme Fighting 11, Fubo is offering a special discount for Lights Out fans. Visit FuboTV.com slash LXF. FuboTV.com slash LXF. That's FuboTV.com slash LXF to start your free trial. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a big round of applause to both of these gladiators. And now, ladies and gentlemen, after three exciting rounds, all three judges score the bout 29-28 for your winner. Out of the blue corner, Elvis Shapazian. Elvis with the victory. Bonnie.
with the interview. Elvis, after such a grueling fight, how were you able to stay so focused? Hey, what? Say. How were you able to stay so focused after this grueling fight? Why I'm staying so focused? I'm like, first of all, I want to thank to God, Jesus Christ, and then I want to thank entire my team. Levy is my striking coach. Armand Sarukian, everybody knows him, you know? Soon he's gonna be like uh, UFC first Armenian uh, champion, you know? Beat everybody. So, like these corners I have, you think I'm gonna lose the fight? Never. And all my Armenian friends, Armenian, my family, everybody. Thank you so much for you came to support. I love you all. God bless everybody. Congratulations, Elvis. Thank you. Thank you, Bonnie. Elvis with a great victory. Blake Bulletproof Troop, I am Pablo Alcina. And what's awesome about Lights Out Extreme Fighting, it's not only the production, the great fighters, it's also the amazing storylines and personalities. Here's a little, little look at our next two fighters. My name is Brandon Joust Arndt, fighting out of uh, the Den Training Center. Uh, my name is Richard Salazar. I fight out of City Boxing in downtown San Diego. Uh, I feel like my strengths over my opponent are definitely my striking. I feel like he's definitely more so a, uh, a grappler. I've always been into boxing. I always grew up admiring all the Mexican boxing stars. So that's kind of what I want to emulate tomorrow night. I want to duke it out. I want to have some fun. I want to bring out that Mexican boxing energy into the fight tomorrow. When it comes to striking, grappling, anything like that, I think I will take it. Yeah, uh, tomorrow I plan on having the most exciting fight of my career so far. I think I finished him by the second round in, uh, in devastating fashion. Coming up next, Brandon Arndt takes on Richard Salazar. You're watching Lights Out Extreme Fighting 11. Gentlemen, please welcome to the Lights Out Cage, Richard Salazar. Richard Salazar making his return to Lights Out Extreme Fighting. We saw him in Lights Out Extreme Fighting 10, I believe. He looked real good, had a tough fight, didn't come out on top at the end, but Let's see if he learned from his last fight. You know, it was a great fight, though. It was very it was. back and forth before he got caught um, in a submission hold by his opponent, which was a fantastic setup. He his said, hair was loose last time. For this one, he went with the braids. You know, you're right. I didn't notice that because he did not have those braids yesterday. 
says he's gonna bring that Mexican fighting spirit to the lights out of street fighting cage. And what does Mexican fighting spirit means? Being a huge fan of Mexico, it means fighting with heart, fighting with passion, fighting with guts, and now fighting with no fear. And that's how Salazar fights. That's how all Mexican fighters. Now, of course, in Mexico, you the sport is boxing. MMA is coming on strong. Hecho in Mexico, Efraín Escudero. He's doing the play, the play, the color commentary in the Spanish broadcast from Mexico. So if anybody has that Mexican pride, you better believe they are ready to fight. Salazar entering the cage. Let's gentlemen please welcome to the lights out cage, Brandon Anhart. Oh, there's... Come back. Brandon Arndt. Just 26 years old, 6'1". This is his second pro fight. He made his pro debut back in April. He lost by a decision, so I expect to see a Brandon going in here not wanting to get to the judge. Follow the fucking game plan. Make him and it's fail. another guy coming right, out with Jake Rosales from the Don't Badger. Do what you guys. fucking do. You earned it. You ready? And we have seen them come out ah! and have two fantastic performances. All fucking day long. With great finishes. I expect to potentially see the same thing here. Right and the same entrance with getting the two hard slaps Nobody's from the coach. Take him in the deep water and drop Whatever gets the guy ready for, to go to war. You know, and I think that sometimes guys being touched. That's what I do before the broadcast. I asked Blake to hit me, but you know he knocked me out, so we stopped doing that. That's because these guns don't come with a safety. And go right through this motherfucker. Having fun like always. Shout out to everyone watching us on Fubo. Send me a message on Instagram. I'll send you a message back. We'll be friends at Pablo Alcina on Instagram. A L S I N A. Pablo Alcina. Follow me. Send me a message. We'll be friends. Blake, what's yours? Tell of the tape, any numbers jump out to you, Blake? I would say a significant height difference stands out for me. We see Ooh. about eight inches of height difference by Brandon over Richard Salazar. And I think that that's going to play a big role in the strike. You can see both these guys next to each other, and Brandon Arnhart is long. Ladies and gentlemen, this next battle will be three. Five-minute rounds in the Battle Wayne Division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This fight stands five feet, five inches tall. He weighed in at 141 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Richard Salazar. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner stands six feet, one inch tall. He weighed in at 135 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Brandon. Your referee for this bout will be Rafael Davis. Davis, the referee, Salazar with the white trunks. Well, they both have white trunks. Brandon out of the red corner with the beard. Salazar with the long hair, and even easier, he has Salazar tattooed on his back. You know, I got my name tattooed on my back, just in case I lost, but the way return. Touching hands, but then she's your last name. You need your address. You want to know where to turn. Salazar getting the little head shake from Brandon going, no, you did nothing. Salazar trying to close that difference. Eight inches. It's tough, but he does it quickly, and he gets the takedown. Nice. He did get in there very quickly. I'd like to see a little bit more setup on his takedown attempts. On Brandon's back. I'd like to see Brandon here try and turn more to his left. He's trying to use the cage here to peel Salazar off. Salazar. Ooh, Salazar has back. both hooks in now from the back. 
but sitting up with their backs against a cage like this, it's not an extremely dominant position. Huge advantage Brent Arnhardt has, as you can see his coach is right there in the background, coaching him through how to get out of this position. Boom, punching to the head. So Arnhardt's doing the right thing of trying to peel that hook off. When you're trying to peel that hook off, your head now becomes vulnerable to strikes. But that's the right defense. Now he needs to continue to roll sideways. Ooh, and Richard Salazar beats him with the transition and gets him out for a slight second. Salazar landing blows, now has the back. But Brandon able to get to his feet. And they're up again. Let's see if Salazar can bring it down and bring him down again. He has that height disadvantage, but it helped for the takedown. Hard kick by Brandon. First strike by Brandon on the deck. Yeah, Salazar got him down with relative ease, but Arnold was able to stand back up with relative ease with Salazar on his wall. That was a big uppercut. Uppercut for Brandon that snuck in there. Salazar strong against the gate. Cage. Yeah, once Salazar gets in, he really does a lot of bulldozing and pushes his opponents around. You saw him just bring Arnhardt to the cage. Arnhardt was able to turn things around. Now has Salazar against the cage, though. Salazar eight inches shorter, but look at that. Well, looks like there's some blood leaking out of the nose of Salazar. That might have been from that uppercut that we just saw a moment ago. Oh, yeah, it's lots of blood that's going to affect his breathing. Let's see if Brandon sees it. So something else about that uppercut is it's going to make Salazar think twice about shooting a shot from distance. His first shot was from very far away. The second one was from fairly far away, too. He got caught with that uppercut. Blood coming, streaming out of the nose, definitely affecting the breathing. And then you have the ball guard. And then he gets a kick to the face from oh, guard. And another I'll one. I'll take too many more of those to the forearm. Because you don't block a kick, you just absorb it from a better area. And there's still two minutes and 30 seconds to go. The breathing definitely affecting Salazar right now. I'd almost like to see Arnhardt just separate, get back out, and fight him at range. He's been doing a fantastic job of owning the stand-up. I'd like to see the referee maybe... Oh! They might need a check, a medical check. Oh! Oh! And he's I, down. And you got to stop the fight. And wow. the victory by Brandon Art unleashing knees to the face. And Davies was late stopping a fight earlier. Not this time. He jumped in there at the correct time. Impressive victory. Brandon Art gets his victory. First win as pro. Another fantastic win for the Badger crew here at Lights Out Extreme Fighting 11. These guys have got the killer instinct and they're bringing it to the cage and putting on some extremely exciting fights. Salazar is a game fighter. He is tough. He can take punches, but he just fell into a buzzsaw with when Brandon landed those knees to the face and that uppercut that really started it. But again, I think he just couldn't breathe. And you can see him, he couldn't breathe. It was just a, a, a tough position for Salazar. Yeah, so here we'll take a look at some of these knees where Arnold had him against the cage. You can see it pushed the left forearm against the head, trapping Ooh. against the cage, landing one, two knees, three knees, and you can see four knees, five knees. Salazar crumples down, but Salazar was still fighting. The referee had to jump in. Salazar didn't quit. He brought that Mexican fighting spirit where he was still fighting. But sometimes we need to be saved from ourselves. Too tough. Look at these knees and oh, the yeah. blood just coming out of Salazar's face. Great job by the referee. There he was in position and he stopped it at the perfect time. Criticized him when he didn't stop it. I'm going to give him props and applaud for the stoppage right there. I agree. That was the right time to step in. And now that I see the Badger flag up close, look at all the blood on that thing. And they're wiping up their opponent's blood to put on the flag, and I love that. You're saying that's on purpose, that they're wiping the blood? Yeah, he just, <laughs> his opponent's blood, and coach just wiped it off the mat. I love that. Like, why is your, why is your flag covered blood? It's not our blood. It's not our blood. I love that. I'm, I am a fan. And look at the smile. He lost his first fight by decision. So we knew... He was going to come in strong. Two minutes, and two minutes, 51 seconds into round number one. Your winner of where TKO, Brandon Arn. Bonnie Jill with the winner. Brandon, first of all, how important was it for you to keep it a striking match? Um, I mean, I was okay with uh, going either or. I feel like I was pretty strong uh, anyway this way this uh, fight went. But before I say anything else, first thing I gotta say, yo ma, happy birthday! Let's go! Let's go! It was my 
my mom's birthday yesterday. I didn't get to celebrate in the proper way that I wanted to. So, Ma, I hope this is a good birthday present on top of the one I already got you, but I love you to death. That's a great birthday present. You have such a big cheering crowd. I mean, what can you say about your family and friends? Do you want to talk to them as well? Oh, my God, you guys are amazing. I love every single one of you guys. Thank you so much for showing up. Every single time I, I fight, you guys are here. I love all of you. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Brandon. That was, thank you, Bonnie. That was awesome. Congrats, Brandon. And mom filming with the iPhone and tears of joy. Absolutely love seeing mom, or Brandon's mom there, filming with the iPhone. Tears of joy. What a great moment. I'm sure she didn't want to see her, her little boy getting hit, but she loves seeing the boy win. I was just going to say, my mom hates watching me fight. I either win or I take a lot of damage. So it's a tough thing as a parent, I'm sure, to be here to watch your kid get inside of the cage and fight. But it can't go much better than that. First round TKO finish. Well, and you know, the mom was there for his first win. Now you got to bring mom back for all, all the fights. He's Blake Bulletproof Troop. I am Pablo Alcina and happy mom after seeing her boy, Brandon, with the victory. A quick break and we'll be back with more. You know you're having fun with us. Lights out, extreme fighting and left. Time now for Blake Bulletproof Troops' keys to victory. First, I'm going to talk about my former teammate, Tommy Aaron, who is a fantastic striker and all-around mixed martial artist. He needs to fight smart. He can't get lulled in to wild exchanges or an extremely scrappy fight. He also needs to mix it up. He needs to use his hands. He needs to use his feet. He needs to use takedowns. The more he mixes it up, the more success he's going to find inside the cage. And finally, he needs to stay technical. Like I said, fighting smart. He cannot get brought into just a wild gunfight exchange. He needs to stay technical and fight a smart fight. And his opponent, Sergio Canones, he needs to make the fight ugly, meaning he needs to get in there and scrap. The more technical the fight is, the less likelihood, in my opinion, that he has to win it. Last, he needs to create exchanges on the feet and swing for the fences once he gets in there. Let's go to our ring announcer. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Lights Out cage, Sergio Quinones. Sergio Quinones entering first out of the blue corner. So we've had the smiler, the dancer, the poker face, and where would we put Sergio's look? Kind of like in the middle of poker face and swag. I'm liking it. How do you see him? 
I would say grumpy and just rolled out of bed. That's what I was, was going to say that too. It's a totally different, different vibe. But hey, to each their own. Some don't want to blow a lot of energy. Some want to hype up the crowd. Others, like you said, look like they just woke up. But something tells me when the bell rings, he's going to come out swinging. Yeah, he has very powerful hands, and he needs to let those hands go. Like I said in the keys to victory, swing for the fences. Sergio Quinones, they call him the outlaw. You want to talk about experience? He has more than 40 pro fights. And it's his third time fighting in the lights out cage. So this man knows what it's like to fight. More than 40 pro fights, and this his return to lights out extreme fighting. 40 fights is an incredible amount of times to make this walk and get inside of a cage and fight somebody. Because not only are you fighting people 40 times, but you have training camps for each of those fights. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the lights out cage, Tommy Aaron. Now this fighter, I liked him before I met him personally, because Blake would say what a great guy he was. And I finally met him today, so we had a conversation. And look how he comes in. Jesus, the way, the truth, the life. Tommy Aaron, the Spaniard, he's fighting for not only himself, but for his family and for his new twin boys. Two weeks ago, Tommy Aaron had twin, well, his wife had twin boys. But this is the craziest story. One boy was born September 19th at 9 p.m. The other boy was born September 20th at midnight. So they're twin boys with different birthday parties. So now mom and dad are in trouble. They're gonna have to throw two different parties, two different days. They can't do that, that one day for each of them. Tell me more about the person that is Tommy Aaron. So I'm gonna tell you about the Tommy Aaron that I know from Black House MMA training. He is one of the hardest workers in the gym. This guy has an everlasting gas tank, an incredible ability to move around, mix up his strikes, changing his stance, great takedown defense, great takedowns, great jujitsu, incredible hands. He is a very well-rounded and developed fighter, and I think he's going to be a handful for the outlaw, Sergio Pinones. He fought on Lights Out Extreme Fighting 9, won in a thrilling first-round victory. He had a kukui was in his corner for that fight. So Tommy Aaron, he trains with some of the best in the world. He trains with Blake Bulletproof Troop. He's fought in lights out. Looking forward to seeing what he can do here. His first fight as now the proud papa of twin boys. Yeah, having a guy like Tony Ferguson order you for a handful of fights in a training camp. Wow, listen to this SoCal crowd for Tommy Aaron. Yeah. Well, Let's go to the tail of the tape between the Spaniard and the Outlaw. So, a big age difference. The Outlaw has nearly a decade of age, same height, same weight, but a significant difference in experience. 17 fights for Tommy Aaron and 41 fights for Sergio Pionones. Wow. In a catch weight division. And it is the first fighting out of the blue corner. This fighter stands five feet, 10 inches tall. He went in at 160 pounds. He has a mixed martial arts record of 14 wins and 27 defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Sergio Quijones. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner stands five feet, 10 inches tall. He went in at 170 pounds. He has a mixed martial arts record of 10 wins and 7 defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Tony Aaron. Your referee for this bout will be Milan Ayers. Tommy Aaron taking on Sergio Quinones. Will this one get out of the first round troop? What do you think? I don't think so. I have a lot of faith in Tommy being able to put the notice away with relative ease. The fight is underway. They touch gloves. Tommy Aaron, the Spaniard in the white trunks. Quinones in the gray. Kicks. Landing at the exact same time. 
bouncing around is Tommy. Inyon is going up top. Oh, great duck under by Tommy. Oh. Swinging over the fence. He's trying to create exchanges like he should. Tommy's fighting his smart fight. Engaging when he wants and disengaging as soon as he's done engaging. Quinones unleashing with Fury, walked in, threw Joe Duran and said he looked like he just woke up out of bed, but then he, oh, oh, oh. connected with the overhand right. That one landed. Yeah, very smart of Tommy to back out. He knows he's going to, oh, bye, bye, baby, head kick, Ayers letting him fight, and it's over. Wow. First round, first minute, TKO win for the new father, Tommy Aaron. And the first thing he does, he gets down on his knees and thanks God. Man, Tommy is such an incredible fighter that I expected him to do to win this fight with in highlight fashion. And sure enough, he did. Tommy Aaron dug, ducked under two evil intention punches by Quinones. Then he responded with an overhand right and then a kick to the head on his trunk since that's Philippians 413. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And well, Tommy Aaron showed what he can do there with that kick to the head. And then it was, oh. Yeah, and the toughness of Sergio Canones for still being conscious after that. Getting hit with a shin like that is like being hit in the head by a baseball bat. And he was still in the fight trying to get up, trying to fight back. But Tommy Aaron overwhelmed him with ground and pound and was able to put him away after that head kick. What a fantastic performance by Tommy the Spaniard Aaron. I want to see that head kick again in replay because it was beautiful. The Spaniard just became a father of twin boys two weeks ago. He said training wasn't that easy when your wife's nine months pregnant, but he did it. He came in and he put on a show, flipped the sign around. But we all know what it says. Tommy Aaron with the victory. There it is. Jesus, the way, the truth, the life, the Spaniard. Says Jesus helped him change his life around. And he'll give thanks as much as he can. Tommy Aaron with a spectacular head kick to start it. And then he finished it off. Wow, baby. South. We still have one more fight to go. Let's go to the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after 45 seconds into round number one, your winner of the TKO, Tommy Aaron. Let's go to Bonnie Jill Laughlin with Tommy Aaron. Tommy, we know how important your faith is. How does that play a part and keep you strong throughout the fight? It's, it's everything. You guys don't understand. You guys don't understand this game. This game isn't as physical as you think. This game is spiritual. This game is mental. What can you say about your twin boys? I know you have two twin boys. If they're watching daddy right now, what do you want to say to them? That I love them very much, and I'm coming home with both my checks. <laughs> Congratulations, Tommy. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. What a win by Tommy Aaron. Didn't take long, but he put on a show. Wow, we spoke highly about Tommy Aaron because we saw him fight in Lights Out Extreme Fighting 9. Blake Bulletproof Troop trains with him. We've seen him. We talked to El Cucuy, Tony uh, Gonzalez, who said, this guy is legit. He is serious, and we saw it again here tonight. Talk to me about the Spaniard, Tommy Aaron. Man, you can just look at his work coming off of two incredible highlight reel first round finishes inside the Lights Out Extreme Fighting Cage. The future is very bright for Tommy Aaron. Tommy Aaron, congrats for the twin boys. Congrats for tonight's victory, and hope to see you in Lights Out Extreme Fighting again soon. You have to love not only the fighters, the finishes, also the personalities. Take a look at the two guys in our main event. Albert, the Belizean Warrior Morales, fighting out of Black House MMA, Carlson Gracie team, and in-depth training. I'm Musa Tolliver, and I'm fighting out of Orange County Regional Training Center in Huntington Beach. One of my strongest advantages is I'm relentless. No matter what I do, as I'm gonna come forward. I'm looking for the finish always, whether it be submission, ground and pound, or knockout. I'm coming forward. 
I'm going to try to dominate every position, stand up, ground, wherever it goes. I'll dominate. I love new challenges. So that's what it's all about, just competing. You already know I'm going to walk out with my Belize flag. You better Belize it. 501 to the fullest. Going to come out there and represent you guys. Looking for that finish. Show you guys what's up. Belize that. The main event is next. Morales taking on Musa Tolliver as we see a very happy and emotional Tommy Aaron giving thanks to thanks to fighting. Time for our main event, breaking it down with his keys to victory, Bulletproof Truth. First, I'm gonna talk about Albert the Belizean Warrior Morales. Number one, he needs to control the distance, utilizing straight attacks and footwork to stay away from Moose Tolliver. Second, he needs to engage and then disengage. Get in, land his stuff, and then disengage before Moose Tolliver is able to wrap him up. And lastly, he needs to look for submissions. If Moose Tolliver is able to take him down, he needs to be aggressive for looking for submissions from the bottom position. And his opponent, Musa Tolliver, needs to utilize pressure. He needs to stay moving forward towards Albert so that he can wrap him up and take him to the ground. Once he gets top position, he needs to land damage from that top position and not just control his opponent. Those were the keys to victory by Blake Bulletproof Troop. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Lights Up page, Musa Tolliver. Musa Tolliver entering second. I saw him backstage. So I'm like, Musa, I'm calling the fights. Is there anything you want me to say? Like I asked Tommy Aaron the same thing. He told me I just had twin boys. I go, Musa, is there anything I want to say? Anything special message or something? He's like, uh, just say, um, he said, I I I'm an, uh, the best non-known fighter you'll, you'll ever meet. <laughs> so I was like, okay, okay. So let's see what Musa can do in there. We'll see. You know, but I'm I like, he's got a name though. I like Musa. I commentated, I believe it was maybe Lights Out of Street Fighting 8 where he had a fight, and he has a very good wrestling style for mixed martial arts. Puts guys against the cage, gets what we call the Dagestani handlock where he traps the guy's arm behind him, takes him down, lands some strikes on him, and then he'll tie up their legs in a special way that we see a lot of the Dagestani fighters in the UFC doing. The thing is, he doesn't always land a ton of damage from top. He controls the guy. So I really believe he needs to utilize a lot of striking once he gets the takedown, if he gets the takedown. Musa, 38 years old, 10 victories as a pro, nine losses though that he has, all by submission. So the ground game is not his strong point. Keep that in mind if it goes that way. 
You know, I would say the ground game, the wrestling probably is his strong point, which is why he finds him there, there's himself in that position so often. But he needs to be better versed in the actual submission part of that game, which Albert is a very high level competitive submission grappler. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Lights Out Cage, Albert Morales. Albert, the Belizean warrior, Morales, 12 victories, tons of experience. He has six fights inside the UFC octagon. He's won three out of his last four fights. And this is a Gracie Academy pupil. So you know he's great with the jiu-jitsu, which is why I was pointing out that Musa has nine submission losses. And you can see him representing Black House MMA, another one of my teammates. And behind him, you can see Kenny Johnson, Bolt Wrestling, who is one of the best wrestling coaches in the game, Dan Gable Hall of Fame. And next to him, Dr. Jason Park, who is an incredible Muay Thai coach, has worked with Anderson Silva, as well as a variety of other very high-level kickboxers. Albert Morales has some of the best coaches in the game coming out with him tonight here at Lights Out of Street Fighting 11. And he's going to bring that knowledge with him inside of the cage and bring it to Musa Tolliver. Morales has fought in four Lights Out events. He won in Lights Out Extreme Fighting 3 and won in Lights Out Extreme Fighting 4. So now he returns to Lights Out Extreme Fighting one more time. This is fifth time in the Lights Out cage. And something worth noting, I believe it was Lights Out Extreme Fighting 4. He won the Bantamweight Lights Out Extreme Fighting title. He eventually lost it, but he is a former Lights Out Extreme Fighting champion. He's getting an earful from that fan next to him. I'm hoping she's supporting him because she's yelling all kinds of things at our guy Albert, the Belizean warrior, Morales. Time for our main event, and oh, it's going to be a good one. You better believe it, my man. Let's go to the tail of the tape for our main event, catch weight fight. 32 years for Albert Morales, 38 for Musa. Yeah, 21 fights for Albert Morales, 22 fights for Musa Tolliver. Very similar all the way across the board. A slight age difference, Musa Tolliver being six years elder. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now time for the main event of the evening. This start will be three, five hundred rounds in a catch weight division. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout is being brought to you by Fumo Sports. And it is the first. Fighting out of the blue corner. This fighter stands five feet eight inches tall. He weighed in at 140 pounds. He has a mixed martial arts record of 10 wins and 12 defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Musa Tolliver. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner stands five feet nine inches tall. He weighed in at 140 pounds. He has a mixed martial arts record of 12 wins and 9 defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Albert Morales! Your referee for this final bout will be Rafael Davis. Time for the main event. Blake Bulletproof Troop, Pablo Alcina. Pablo, these guys have not broken eye contact since they've both been inside of the cage. And typically, that tension leads to incredible scraps. Listen to the crowd. And the fight's underway. Main event, Musa Tov in the white. Trunks, Albert Morales in the black. Fighting out of the red corner. Low kick. Whoa, by Morales. Chop that thing in there. And that one connected right on the ankle. No checking by Tolliver, who looks for the takedown. Yeah, gets in, gets a single leg. Let's see. Albert's doing the right thing here by getting the wizard, getting some head position. Nice elbow from the inside. Musa Tolliver, ooh, immediately wraps Albert up, and Albert is able to escape without even being threatened with him with hitting the ground. Goes for another chopping leg kick. One of the things about kicking a guy in the leg like that is it's going to reduce the effectiveness of his takedown shot, which if Albert Musa loses his takedown, it's going to significantly reduce his main advantage over Albert Morales, which would be his wrestling. Yeah, there is Musa shooting, trying to get the takedown. Let's see if Morales goes to the leg again. Had that great kick to the ankle to start the fight. Albert's doing a fantastic job of changing levels and fainting, keeping Musa taller for guessing. You see him going up and down, up and down, up and down, chop the leg. That route on the head of Musa, was that there before? 
Did that just happen? I, I think that might have been from the inside elbow that he landed while Musa had the single leg. Yeah, Look, that's chopped in an elbow. It's blowing up. And it wouldn't surprise me if that's what it's from. He has Dr. Jason Park in his corner, who's a fantastic Muay Thai coach. And that is a traditional Muay Thai move at inside elbow. Yeah, and he has his Muay Thai trunks as well. I'd like to see Albert continue to use that leg kick. He chopped that leg several times earlier in the round. Nice. Stuffs the takedown again. Gets the underhook. Albert's measuring that straight right also. He, he steps into it a bit more. I think he can connect flush with the right. I want to see a little bit more, like I said, of him chopping the leg. It's, it's open. And it's going to significantly reduce Moose with Tal Moose and Tolliver's ability to shoot a takedown. SoCal crowd here, Chan Warrior. A lot of people came out to support the Belizean Warrior, Albert Morales, tonight in Lights Out Street Fighting 11. This fight, a catch weight at 140 pounds. We're seeing a lot of fantastic movement out of, out of Albert. Oh, and next combination. There's that right that connected. Albert did a good job of engaging and disengaging there. Getting in, landed a little bit, and stepped back out. Because we know Moose Talbot is going to be shooting a shot and trying to wrap Albert up. So if he stays inside on an exchange too long, he might grab it. There's another one of those leg kicks. Both from rival gyms. I'm not saying it's bad blood, but you want to be your rival. There's always a competitive bonus to competing against a rival. I want to see more of those chopping low kicks. There it is again. He needs to keep those up. Back up. Moose Talbot wants to walk out of him. Chop that kick again. Just keep pulling a jab out to keep him right there and then chop that leg kick. Great head movement by Morales. Even though Tolliver is not throwing punches, he's still doing the head movement. So, so this is where I think that the, that inside elbow is landed by Morales. Oh, oh, jumping knee from the inside there for the single leg defense. He has done a fantastic job of shutting down four or five Musa Tolliver's takedowns thus far in the first round. Good first round so far. And Morales going up top of the left. Kick to the head. Yeah, he's coming low with the right kick and high with the left kick. I want to see more chop in that leg kick, especially if Moose Taller circles to his left leg. Oh! And it's going to finish. One and one. The crowd erupting. Truth, what did I say? He's measuring that straight right. If he steps into it, it's going to connect flush. He stepped into it, connected flush. Like I called it, lights out, five, five, baby. You called it. He was patient, looked for his, looked for his moment, set it up, got in, engaged, and got the finish on Busa Tolliver. Yeah, that was just a beautiful, beautiful showing of measuring a guy out the whole time early on he saw that the right found the hole then he found it again then he didn't throw it so i'm wondering how come and i knew he was going to step into it i want to see the replay it was beautiful you know him you know his team you were high-fiving before the fight what does this mean to his gym and to albert morales you know to come in and have such a dominant win over a fighter like Musa Tolliver who has performed time and time again inside the lights out of street fighting cage. It's a massive Oh there's that right hand that put him down. Oh rewind that a little bit more before the punch if we can on the replay. Not right there. You will see watch this. Step to the boom. Perfect. He continued with a barrage. Three, four, five more strikes for Musa hit the ground. And then jumped on five, six more unanswered strikes there on the ground. A lot of these didn't necessarily land crazy flush, but he was so damaged. You see wow. the referee stopping the Moose Tolliver continued to fight, actually trying to take the referee down here. Look, he's about to take down the ref. Well, that's what happens when you get damaged. Your body goes into reaction. That's reflex mode. And so that he is a scrapper and he continued to fight. And so boost hats off to Moose Tolliver because you can't teach that. That was instinct right there. But there we are with Albert, the Belizean Warrior Morales, taking home a fantastic first round finish that he should be very proud of. He's got his Belizean flag, Belizean flag, the Belizean Warrior. You better believe it. What a win, what a fight, what a night. And the three minutes, 30 seconds into round number one, your winner, the TKO, Albert Morales. Morales.
Gonzalez with the win in our main event. Let's go to Bonnie Jill Laughlin. Albert, was it your plan to finish him right away, or did you just see an opportunity? It's always plan to finish the guy right away. We don't get paid by the minute over here. Take us through that TKO. What did you see from your eyes? Um, I just saw him drop, and I got to look for the finish. But first of all, I want to say big up to Miss Ketchy. Hey, 501 in the house. Believes in the house, baby. Thank you, guys. I love you guys. Hey, your energy back home brought me to this next level. I'm going to bring it back. Hey, this is just the first fight back. We're coming back. Congratulations. You're winner, Alba Morales. We'll see you back here November 18th. What a main event. Punch that landed and then finished it off. Albert Morales, the Belizean warrior. Lights out extreme fighting. 11 has been sensational. Which was your favorite fight, Blake? There were so many tonight. Man, that is a tough one. Um, I'm going to have to go with Albert, the Belizean warrior, taking this first round finish home in the main event against an extremely tough Musa Tolliver. Had a fantastic game plan and came out and performed it to the team. So I'm giving hats off to Albert Morales. It's my fight of the night. Yeah, we talked about Albert Morales before the fight. We said you have to keep an eye on this guy. So let's roll the replay on how the main event finished. Now watch Morales. He's waiting. And I said just step into it. And here he comes just taking his time. And there's the step in. And it was bye-bye. It was open all night. And then he finished it off. And something I didn't notice, he jabbed to the body first and then came with the one-two to the head. And, and Blake, talk to me about this. And so at the end of the fight, referee steps in. Musa Tolliver doesn't know that happened. And he's shooting for the takedown on who he thinks is his opponent. And he's kind of rock, so he's on reaction mode here, which is something you can't teach. There's no quit Musa Tolliver. And even if the referee steps in and he's damaged, he continues fighting for the takedown, even though it was on the referee. And great work by the referee to hold him there. Sean Merriman, that's him there. He's super pumped. Lights out, Extreme Fighting 11 has been an amazing night. We still have a lot more, so don't go anywhere. A quick break, and we'll be back. Your boy, Bulletproof Troop, Pablo Alcina. You know you're loving it. We'll be back with more Lights Out, Extreme Fighting 11. What a night. We are live on Fubo Sports. This was live uh, LFX11. Lights, Lights out. Lights out. Fighting fighting 11. 11. What a night. Blake, we saw knockouts. We saw submissions. We called it all. What was your favorite part? You know, I'm going to have to go with the Belizean Warrior winning a first round um, TKO over a tough Moose Tolliver. Came in, had a fantastic game plan, and executed it to the T.
Let's roll a minute of some of the best action that we saw tonight so you guys can enjoy it again. This was the first fight, and we knew it was going to be a good night, Blake. When, when you kick like the that. card off with a knockout like that, you know big things are to come. Second fight, submission win by A.J. Hodgkins. Third fight, we saw a very impressive Carvajal using the ground and pound. He sent that fighter to the hospital. Following that was Andrew Campos and Brian by go to decision. One of the few decisions of the night, Brian Campos won. And the fights kept coming and the finishes kept going. Michael Burke finishing it right there, picking up his first victory as a pro. And then we saw Miguel Guzman come out in his professional debut and take home a slick round two TKO. Then we had more action. Ethan Ewing, an impressive, he dominated his fight. That was the most one-sided fight, but he looked real good. I like that one. Then we had Elvis and Yanni coming out fighting each other, coming from rival oh, gyms. Oh, oh, Elvis yeah. taking home a unanimous decision oh. victory. Bang, bang, getting smacked. His teammate also getting a win. And then we saw the Spaniard, Tommy Aaron. Tommy Aaron with a kick to the head, winning the co-main event. And in the main event, it was Albert Morales. Morales with that victory. What a night. An amazing night. This was Lights Out Extreme Fighting 11. November 18th is Lights Out Extreme Fighting 12. It's going to be in this same location, so get your tickets. This was a party. Packed house. Amazing fights, like always. Yeah, Blake Bulletproof Troop, known for dropping warheads on people's foreheads alongside my tag team partner, the man, Pablo Alcina. And we will see y'all on November 18th. I want to thank everybody in production that made this possible. Pablo Ruiz, our producer, in my ear, George Amir, handling everything else, and amazing work by everybody in this production staff. Until next time, November 18th, Lights Out Extreme Fighting 12. He's Blake Bulletproof Troop. I am Pablo Alcina. Bye-bye, baby. Lights, Lights out. out.